just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Bloke in a Bar. Oh, you heard that noise. It's the big fella. It's the big fella, the great Gordy Tellus, opening the uh, can of midi. He's also in the beautiful bloke jerseys. I love it. It's about time we played together. Oh, mate, 100%. We're on the same team. <laughs> Look, I need you to just protect me, to be honest. I'm, I'm on the wing. Okay. I'll be a bit chirpy. I just need you to take care of me, Gordy. <laughs> You're okay, mate. You're okay. <laughs> uh, make sure to head to bloke.shop, grab your bloke jersey, uh, limited edition. Uh, once we sell out of these, we are not making them again, guys. So head to bloke.shop, grab your jersey. Also, make sure to grab a case of bloke, bloke in a bar beer uh, from your local. But, uh, Gordy, mate, how you been? I've made it. Oh, I've made it. Up. I've been watching oh, you for mate. a long time, mate. Oh, okay. Mate. The kick, Lockie kicks across. Uh, I watched this kid playing, played soccer, and then he's got the number one podcast. And now I've made it. Oh, I'm with Gordy. the cool kids right now. You're making me blush, Gordy. I'm with the cool kids. You're I know make that. me blush, for us. <laughs> oh, I, I appreciate yeah. it. How are you going, brother? I'm good. Really? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Footy season's up and swinging. Yep. You know. Um, they have a job in the game and the way they play, it's mm. it's pretty good. Sometimes you pinch yourself, I'm 50 this year, so to still have a voice and get out there and try to stay relevant, and it's mm. it's pretty cool. And, like, what do you reckon of the game? You know, you I reckon most people would think that you played footy when it was, like, the glory days of rugby yeah. league, like the real, the pinnacle yeah. of yeah. a mixture of the old school but also yeah. the professionalism and the athletes that come into the game. What do you think of the game today? I think it's outstanding. Mm. Um, my glory days were probably the 80s. It's probably when you're in it, you don't feel like it's it's the glory days. Yeah, I suppose like when you're in doing the work, you've yeah. always watched someone and looked up to them. So mm. that's when you glorify, uh, yeah. glorified it. So, um, But the game, it's it's as tough as it's ever been. It's fast. Mm. Um, I think Peter Volandis has done a great job. Like I was one of the guys I cracked down. I said it didn't look like rugby league. They cracked down at mm. Magic Ground last year. But look at the product now. Look at the fans at sell out. Look at Anzac Day. Look at, you know, the Dolphins coming into the competition. Every week, your team's a chance of winning. Most teams, most teams go out there and they're a chance of winning. Like yeah. if you're back in your team, you go, I oh, know we're a chance. Yeah. Do, you know, the Dragons fans would have went to watch them play the Roosters and go, we're a chance today. Such a good point. Yeah. And it probably wouldn't have happened a couple of years ago. Mm. So I think, you know. The comps in a really good situation. Yeah, because I reckon there would have been probably a decade where you're going, the start of it, you're going Manly, then you would go Roosters Storm. <laughs> yeah, Melbourne. That and was that's it. it. That's really it. And um, now you could probably pick five or six teams. Yeah. And yep. there's going to be a surprise packet like a Parramatta did last year. Mm. And, you know, no one thought they could have made it or the. Uh, or the Raiders, yep. you know. So, mate, there'll be a team that'll just break through and get some wins together, get some momentum. And mate, I um I agree in regards to like even though, yeah, as we all do, there's certain parts of the game that we agree with, we disagree yeah. with, or whatever. But from a broad bird's yeah. eye view, yeah, we've never been in a better place. Like the game is super exciting. It's the most viewed sport in the country, yep. and I, and I think even though there's certain things where Landy's decisions he made that I disagree with. His aggressive nature to get things done has yeah. helped the game. It really has. Well, again, everybody, <coughs> it's so tribal, our game. And, mm. you know, Queensland versus New South Wales is a big tribe. But then you come into Sydney and then there's the nine teams that they don't want. Yeah. You know, and they want another team in Queensland to break up the Broncos' dominance. But mm. whatever it is, for the first time, I think everybody's pulling in the one direction, whether it's, you know, Queensland's not arguing with the NRL mm. or New South Wales. I think that we're all moving in the same direction and that's really powerful for our yeah. game that's a great point because like the history of new south wales yeah. and queensland is so well you know like the, you know winner manly would be whinging because there's not enough money in yeah. grassroots and then broncos would be and but for the first time those voices have sort of mm. you know, um and they've got quieter which is a great job that means we've got great leadership at the top the pathways are great the kids coming through the game or when i say the kids are uh, the young men still mm. still coming into our game at first class, like I, you know, Wally Lawson's my hero. You look at the players that are in now, Munster's the closest thing to mm. him. So mm. there's the the production line out there is really good yeah. for our talent. Mate, uh, the, great, the great Mad Dog Munster, the great Mad Dog Munster. <laughs> who's, a, who's a forward that you, you know, because I know you being yourself, you don't really realise, you know, the Gordy Tellers, the idea of Gordon Tallis to other people is almost yeah. larger than life. But to you, you're just, you're just a person. You're just a human being. I was being. a skinny little black kid from <laughs> yeah. Townsville. That was it. 
Whereas like to I always else. saw myself as yeah, a, yeah. As a little kid that just loved playing the game. I don't see that. Mm, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like Jared Aria Hargreaves or Adrian Morley or Sam Burgess, they mm. don't they don't see that. There's there's fears with those guys. Mm. Yeah, you know I mean, if I'm running down and I saw Matty Bowen, I see a guy that I can go and close him down. I know he's going to step. I know he's going to step. I know which way he's going to go, and he still beats you. Yeah, but Matty doesn't see himself as that. Yeah, that. Yeah, you know I mean, so like, then no one I think really looks at themselves right. They'll all either, they'll either have too big of an opinion of, of yeah. themselves. Yeah. Or they won't believe in themselves enough. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, no one really gets it spot on. Yeah. I'd say for sure. Who's a who's a, a forward now that you just love to watch? Like you really, I like I like our number thirteens. I mm. really love the way that's evolved because when I when I grew up watching, there was the you know Paul Vaught and Bob Linda, Wayne Pierce. There was that, mm. and they were all different players, but they were well. They all played for their country, and then Bradley Clyde come along and just mm. broke the mold. Yeah, well, yeah. this big guy that could play from <laughs> centre through to Lock, and he'd play front row. Like he was big enough to play front row. And then mm. you watch Yo now that he's first receiver, and you watch Cameron Murray, and you watch, you know, Carrigan. Mm. The 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 way that and Jason Tamalolo, oh, who just plays a different yeah. way. But um, yeah, I think the locks I really enjoy. But I still love watching someone like a Jared or Hargreaves. Yeah, yeah. And then my favourite player in the game, if I pick one now, it's young Jaden Campbell. I yeah, don't think he's over 80 right. kilos. I mm. played against his dad. Mm. I watched his dad make a debut and where he's from in Tinga. Mm. For that kid, he's broke a lot of mold. Like, and mm. to come and play. And if you looked at Jaden walking down the street Tiny. and Jared Rear Hargreaves is going, you go, oh, yeah, that guy plays footy against him and he'll stand in front of him. You go, go away. <laughs> yeah, no chance. Because yeah. of New FC, who they say is a tough sport, they could never get in a ring with each other. Yeah, it's such a good point. That is a Great point. Right? Yeah, We're yeah, a yeah. tough game, right? Yeah, yeah, So yeah. we get the little guys like the Alan Langers, the Prestons and all those guys and young Jaden mm. Campbell, he scored a try the other weekend. He just bumped in and he knocked Jack Bird on his backside against the Dragons and he scores a try and just the way he uses his body. So yeah, I really like the little guys in our game because I think they achieve more mm. every moment than what we – than the big guys because mm. – you know, Jared's supposed to be big and tough and hard to stop. Yeah. You know, and Big Nelson's supposed to be big and strong and hard to stop. Mm. But you get these little guys yeah. that they show a lot of courage. Mm. I'll uh, always be appreciative of Jaden Campbell. My um, my nephew, uh, his favourite player is Jaden Campbell. And it was around Christmas time. I just sent Jaden a message and said, oh, mate, my nephew's. And within like two hours, boom, video. Hey, mate, wish you. Anyway, my, my nephew's literally in tears. He was so <laughs> stoked with it. So... Very, very appreciative to a, a guy like Jaden Campbell because, and I agree in regards to like excitement. Yeah. I, I really think he's up there with some of the best players in the in the comp, and I do think I just wish that there was some way he could get more time at the Titans. Oh, uh, he will. Yeah, he will. Like you got someone like AJ Brimson. I, I think long term, he's a he's a fullback. He's a starting fullback. Mm. He's a player. He's he's got something that only. Like, when you look at his career, you're going to look and go, only he did it, like only a Greg Inglis. And mm. in a certain ways, but some of the things that he does mm. on the field is just him. He attacks the ball here, mm. you know, which is a bit like his old man, you know. They just yeah. you know, like they just, just attack it, the bounce. It's like the ball's in slow motion when it's around them mm. on the ground where we're all, which way is it going to go? Yeah. We're like a fat kid on a cupcake <laughs> sort of thing, you know. We're like, oh, where's it going? <laughs> like it's, yeah, you know, like, man, on a trampoline and... <laughs> But, mate, the balance that they show, yeah. So, mm. um, yeah, he's going to have a, a long career. Yeah, mate, I cannot wait. He's highlight reel by the end of his uh, career. It is going to yeah. be incredible. But, um, mate, take us back to a young fellow, obviously born in Townsville. Yeah. Uh, indigenous. Also Tongan, but Greek as well, mate. Greek, Greek is hey. it? It says Greek. Greek descent. That's what the wiki says. Thus of that all. I mean, that means I smack you in Greek. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, do you know what? It's funny because when I went to Santorini one day. Yep. Was this the, the video? The video? No, the video? that was in Mykonos. Mate. The Greeks claim me. Really? So yeah. Because they, they like Talos is IS, right? Yeah, okay. So all Greeks are IS. Yeah, like this. okay. So they go, hey, yo, mate, I knew you were Greek. I'm like, oh, mate, I'm not. <laughs> the Yasu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. So, so dad's a black fella, so he... You know, come in and they built the railway, so they come in as 
Kanakas like slaves or whatever into North Queensland and they help with the farming and building all the railway. And mum's a little, and my grandfather on my mum's side, he's a little Scottish mm. guy. His name was Alexander Gordon MacDonald, so you can't get more Scottish you than literally that. literally so, can't get more Scottish So you've got this little short sort of half Scottish lady meets a, meets a six foot four Indigenous guy. And um, dad passed away seven years ago, you know, about 10 days ago. And you know, I just remember being at his funeral and I would never have changed my upbringing just because mm. of who we were and what we had and we didn't have much. And I remember... Mum and dad, they rented their fridge and their television. We didn't know any of this as kids because you know, we just grew up humble. Mm. And it wasn't poor because we had everything we needed. We had mm. love. We had, you know what I mean? Like I was going and getting football. I was getting hand-me-down footy boots or whatever. Mm. I had the greatest life. And that's what I said to mum because we didn't know anything. And now we do, I'd say, have better lives. But sometimes it's not better because of, you know, how happy we were as kids and a family. And so that's yeah. a credit to those guys mm. to... And that's but that's the way everybody was. That's that's the way the world was back then. You know, mm. you you didn't have to keep up with the Joneses. You didn't know there wasn't social media. You didn't know that people were going here social and there and way. everywhere. You didn't know what you're missing out on. Yeah, I missed out on nothing because we didn't know yeah. what we we're missing. Now everybody knows what, yeah, yeah, <laughs> what everybody right. else has got. It's it's yep. uh, you know, it might be a tough world now for those kids that generally don't have the same as the other guys, mm. but. As long as when they come in the door, the most important thing they got is love, I suppose. Yeah. And so growing up, was it, uh, did you always, I guess, gravitate towards sport? Was it yeah. footy? Was it soccer? Was it AFL or what was it? I didn't play soccer. Um, I played AFL. Mm. As a kid, my dad played a lot of AFL. I played uh, AFL for the Garbutt Magpies. Mm. And Garbutt's so, sort of like the air, where the airport is in Townsville. So like, and we had a side there and they've just got back into the competition. So... We'd play AFL and rugby league and my brother would play rugby union and rugby league. Mm. Um, as a family, we would play softball together. Yeah, like yeah. it was something that the whole family did. Yeah, like yeah. dad was playing and, and then, um, I was playing t-ball, my brother was that and my yeah. sisters were playing and my mum was playing and in basketball, we'd all play. Mm. Um, so I tried every sport, mm. but rugby league chose me, I think. Mm. It, it's just... I love playing all the other sports. I like I really did. Um, played a bit of cricket. It was just too hot in town to play cricket. Mm. But rugby league and you know, when I talk to people, it gives everybody an opportunity. Like Alan Lang is a train driver's son from Ipswich, mm. and I'm from Townsville. And you get someone like Shane Webke, who's a farmer's son. But we all can blend and play. I don't think there's too many games. If I'm a basketball, I've got to be six foot six and six and be able to dunk. Mm. Now, where rugby league, you can, you can still sort of yeah. it just allows everybody to mm. come in. So. Um, I tried all the sports, but yeah. rugby league was the one that was the one. Me. Yeah, and mainly because Gene Miles was playing in Townsville at the time. Okay, um, Colin Scott, a bloke named Chris Phelan, uh, Tony Cambrius, all these guys. When I was going to the Townsville Sports Reserve, where they'd play, I'd be the ball boy, mm. and watching these guys play, and they were really successful. And then three years later, they're playing State of Origin, like the ones playing in the grand finals at Parramatta. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. You know, the ones playing with Wally Lewis at Winner Manly and they're winning yeah. game. So it was it was pretty cool. So that's that's probably why I chose rugby league because my heroes, who I could touch and feel, mm. generally, mm. you know, were in front of me. So they were sort of leading the way. It's interesting how important being able to see something is. You know, I like, so. you know, you saw players actually go and succeed. And you, you yeah. may not think, oh, well, I definitely can go and do that, but you think what subconsciously, if? yeah, like what if maybe, maybe I could do what they did, you know? Yeah, well, I never thought of it, mm. but then you go, oh, the Jim, oh, Jim Miles was Townsville, well, he went there, or this, and then there's, yeah. you just know that there's a pathway, or you know, you didn't even know what a pathway was back then. You yeah. just know that there's an opportunity one day if you're good enough that mm. they'll come and find you, mm. Mm. you know, which, uh, which was pretty cool. Mm. And rugby league, I think. For a lot of kids like myself that you could probably understand that school i i didn't try as hard as i did in the state of origin let me tell you that <laughs> yeah, you know some yeah. days i wish i did but yeah um you know rugby league saves a lot of kids in the community because mm. sport sport brings you together and sport brought north queensland together there's no doubt if you look at the cowboys now but if you look at what rugby league did to that area there was only one real game in north queensland that was rugby league mm. so no matter where you were it was all the cane farms it was all the Italians, you know, in Air or Ingham and, and like the Northern Banana Farmer, they all played rugby league. Everybody joined in. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure whether that happens anymore. If people go to an area and join in. Yeah. But mate, back in those days, there was one game and it was rugby league and it was 
the main game and there'd be 8,000 people there watching. Mm. You know, if the towns were playing Ingham or yeah. Air or Cairns and it was cool. It was good to go watch. That's something that I've always loved about team sport is like, you know, obviously we still have our struggles in regards to people getting discriminated against or whatever. But I've always loved in team environments of like, it really doesn't matter what your the history is. The colour of your is. jersey, look at this yeah. one. Hey? That beautiful jersey. <laughs> but it doesn't matter what your history is, it's everyone is equal here. Like everyone, we all go on, we work together. It's a great level. And it breaks it? down so many barriers. Um, you know, even for me personally, I've spoken about it quite a few times on the podcast, but before I changed to rugby league, I had no no touchstone to anything Indigenous. Like I couldn't tell you, only know, knew about the dream time because of school, yep. study of religion. And the Apo family, I'm not sure, do you know the Apo family? I know family? the Apos. So basically, I, they let Merely me, Apo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. So there basically, I was driving from Gold Coast to Brisbane to train every day. I was on a tiny contract, four grand a year or whatever. Yep. They brought me up into the first grade squad and they would let me sleep on their couch or floor for free. And um, basically, they let me around for all their family feeds, never asked for a thing in return, like never, ever. And it was this beautiful introduction into the culture yeah. that I'd never had. And I wouldn't get that without sport. No, they're unbelievable. Yeah, that's that's one th- that's one thing that the Aboriginals and the Islanders they get it right. Families first, and if you're mm. there and you're part of it, they just treat you as one of them. Mm, mm. And the Apos, it's funny because um, Dad was the first Indigenous captain to leave this country. That's the game when they just played this year was I think 50 years since Dad was a captain, and, wow. and then Apo was in that side with no Dad. Way. Yeah. Nearly absent. Yeah, nearly absent. Um, Chuck Mundine's um, uncle, yeah. Mickey Mundine, and there was Larpa Stewart. There's a lot of guys from around this area yeah, that wow. all played. You know, so when I'd walk and I went because I played for Redfern in the knockout one year, mm, everybody yeah. was coming up because they knew Dad and they played with Dad in that original oh, game. So wow. like, so the so the connection that rugby league does. Mm. So I came to Sydney, a little kid, and there's people walking up and go, I know your father went like that and yeah. mate, if you ever need anything, give us a yell. So that's yeah, well. yeah, that's a great thing that sport does. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So were you always, I guess, a cut above the rest no. when you played? No, no, not at all. No, my brother, my sister was the best athlete in our family. Okay. She played for Queensland and everything. She played Queensland netball, softball, basketball. She ran for Queensland. She was a, she was a bit yeah. of a freak, uh, Janita, and then – um, my older sister, she was just as good, just didn't really like it. And my mm. brother was the footy star. He okay. was the one. He played for Queensland. He signed with the Broncos in 1989. The Broncos came to my house or to mum and dad's house, mm. knocked on the door. And um, the, uh, the great Brian, Brian Canavan, he's been around for ages, so he knocked mm. on the door and uh, he signed my brother. So yeah. he was a 17-year-old kid. And that's where Wayne Bennett gets that story because mm. the Broncos come to play a trial match yeah. And I run past, and Wayne's getting old, so he doesn't quite have the story. But I remember <laughs> Wayne there, and he goes, What are you kids doing? And we were just running them up, kicking the ball, because they're warming up, and yeah. we just, we, don't, we didn't care. Like, we're 14, 15, 16, you know, chasing girls, kicking balls, yeah. doing what we did. Yeah. And he goes, What are you boys doing? He said, Nothing. And he goes, Well, I, and he just must have mumbled something, as Wayne does. <laughs> and I said, You signed my brother. He goes, Did I? He goes, What's your name? He said, Wally Tallis. I said, But you signed the wrong brother. No way. And just, but it was a throwaway line. Wayne took that as I backed myself in that moment. It wasn't. It was just yeah. a young it was kid, more just a like bit cheeky. cheeky. Yeah, okay. You signed the wrong brother. I'm, of course I wanted my brother there. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I, for sure. You know what I mean? It's not as if you signed the wrong brother. It's more just cheek, really. It was cheek, yeah. yeah. But then that's a famous line that Wayne said that I believed in myself from a young kid. Well, I didn't. It was mm. a throwaway line. But um, I was never the best. I played for Townsville every year. I didn't play for Queensland my first Queensland team was state of origin. Wow. My first uh, real rep side was for New South Wales. Oh, really? Yeah. So uh, I made North Queensland schoolboys under 12s. Mm. I went to – I played for school. I went to, like, the reps. They put me in hooker. How do you reckon <laughs> that went? No one touched the ball, seriously. I was like Brandon Smith. I just picked it up. I was, I was, a, I was a skinny blonde at a wombat. I just picked it up, tucked the ball under the arm and just <laughs> run. And then they picked me as a back rower mm. – um, so I played for North Queensland under twelves. It wasn't that significant. Then I signed with St George. Yep. And then I'm playing under nineties. They picked me for City. So I played for. I said, oh, I'm not a City. I'm a country guy. Really. Yeah, yeah. They said, No, no. You're playing in City. You play for City. Mm. And I made New South Wales. Yeah, yeah. Which was really cool. So that was. And I remember going to Brian Smith, who was a coach. I 
don't think I should play for New South Wales. For one, I'm taking a kid's spot and I didn't want to play for New South Wales, but I wanted to play for Queensland. And he goes, mate, they don't want you. Because they couldn't back then. It wasn't state of origin yeah. back at the time. And he goes, and you're going to be taking a young Queenslander spot that's going to get a chance to get into where you are now. Mm. So I played for New South Wales. It was great. The Hopawati and the boys, we had a really good side and uh, we beat Queensland. It's, uh, it's interesting how I think a lot of people, like they look at that and they go, oh, you know, how could you play for New South Wales? But when you're so young, you're thinking of your career. Like you're thinking, I want to play footy. Yeah, yeah I didn't think I was... I didn't think I, I never turned my back on Queensland. I didn't, mm, mm. but I got chosen. And Brian Smith, it, it was great advice. He said, "Son, you may never get to a chance to play rep football ever again." Mm. I'd got to Sydney. I'd played seven games. Mm, mm. I'd played seven games for yeah. St George in their under nineteens team on parks that no one watches here, like on Henson Park and none of these grounds yeah. on North Sydney Oval, number two, the one close to the freeway and mm. all of this. So we never. So no one was watching us. Yeah. So then to go and play at Parramatta Stadium, yeah. you know, uh, before city versus country and then to go play uh, at a state of origin for New South Wales against Queen, it's, it's pretty cool. Oh, it's massive for a young yeah, I mean, yeah, so. Massive for a young So kid. like, yeah, and then that was cool. And like blokes like Rick, and I, and I got lifelong friends out of the, that New South Wales side, mm. you know, because it was John Hopawati, there was Luke Rickardson, Damien Chapman. There's a lot of really, yeah. really cool kids that played in that side. So, so how did you – so you made the North Queensland side. How did you get picked up? Because uh, you said Dragons obviously yep. picked you up first. How did that come about? Was there any other clubs that were interested or – I was in the pool with one of my mates in Townsville. We played for Centrals, the Tigers. Yep. You might know Michael Luck as an old lucky. Tigers. We're lucky, Tigers yes. boy. So, like, then uh, – yeah, so like we were there and little Ray Thompson, so we're all Tigers. And then I played the under-18s grand final. We won. Rod Reddy, who had – he's a St. George legend, finished his career uh, at Wollongong um, at the Steelers, came and coached – captain coached in Townsville in 86 and 87. I'm mm. 13 and 14. Mm. Then he goes over to England and has a bit of a coaching career, comes back to St. George, coach and reserve grade, assistant coach first grade. That's all they did. Mm. There was three coaches in your club, you know, <laughs> yeah, first yeah. grade, reserve grade and under-21s and they'd all yeah. come together, you know, they'd all yeah. sort of help and they'd be coaching and that's the way yeah. the cookie crumbled. And then Rod, they must have said, hey, mate, do you know any kids, mate? We need some good young kids. So he rang all the clubs that he played for and he rang Centrals. Mm. It's the president of the club. I just happened to be in his pool swimming with his son. Oh my god! That's it. No way. That's how I got to start. No way. That's it. That's just so. Like... Then, who's playing good? And he named all the good players. Mm. He goes, "Oh, Gordy, tell us." He just Central's just won the under 18s He was captain. Mm. He rang home, and then that night, about eight o'clock or seven o'clock or something, and then I got a trial match, and I thought, "How good's this?" I'm, I've made it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right, I'm thinking, how good, right? <laughs> yeah. So I go to St. George. I play a trial match. Mm. Any kid could have walked off the street. Mm. It wasn't a trial match. It was just like the – so they went like that and they went, oh, mate, can you come back next week? I'm like, mum and dad just saved up for this plane ticket, the old paper plane ticket. I can't stay. Rocker goes, stay at my place. Yeah. Can you play the week after? We will change the flight. So then mm. that was the invitational one. Yeah. That was okay. when all the kids – that's when – and then when they walk in and they've got the New South Wales schoolboys bag and that, that's when yeah. I'm like, that's when I had doubts. Yeah, like, I've okay. never had more doubt on my career than walking in there because everybody had all these rep jerseys and shorts on because it was because you'd wear your own kit yeah, sure. and they'd throw everybody a jersey and it wasn't as good as this jersey. So they'd throw <laughs> everybody a jersey and I only played 20 minutes in that game. Mm. So that's how I made it. Yeah, wow. That is just like to, to think. Mm -hmm. To how it works today. But, yeah. It's but wasn't totally Danny Badiris... Have you heard that story about Danny Badiris and Joel Kane? I've heard bits of it, but yeah, no, like mate. Joel Kane got signed <laughs> right at the Dragons, but they but they watched Danny Badiris' footage. <laughs> 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 it's something like that. Yeah. So like the, so like they're watching this footage and go, <laughs> this guy's a and then after about eight weeks, they go. Hey mate, how come you're not playing like that? <laughs> and then I think they're from the same area. Mate, that's he fly, that's Danny Madeira. I'm I'm the guy in the other team or <laughs> whatever. Oh, it's man. a great story. Oh, far the out. great Jola. Um, <laughs> so you moved down to Sydney when you're 19. 19. 19. Yeah. Uh, did you 
at this age, were you already known to be an aggressive player, or did you did you build into that as a? I think I built into. It. I didn't. Yeah. I, I didn't have any. I wasn't allowed to, Dad. You you weren't allowed to do mm. it, even in the street. Like no, so just started playing, and I think it was the nature of the beast. I think mm. you know. Um, I didn't have any troubles the first couple of years I was playing. It's just as I got older, mm. and then you start getting into it and you're taking it serious. I think. I think my competitiveness that I never really had, once it started to boil mm. and it's going, you know, I couldn't turn it off. Yeah, okay. That's it. You yeah. just can't turn it off. And the real good ones can, but some can't. Mm. Like Jared can't turn his off. <laughs> Victor Radley, like you can't. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Sam Burgess, you can't. Mm. And a mine would just spill over every now and then, but yeah. um, I liked it. Yeah, that's I, it. I didn't. I like watching those guys. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love when they're right at the edge and, you know, it could go here. Yeah. <laughs> like oh, Victor, mate. you're like Victor, like you just watch him and there's a moment and I sit on the edge of the seat because I just want Victor just to go. <laughs> just I want it. Sam Burgess. Like I want – but that's but that's part of the game that I love. Yeah, agreed. You know? Agreed. Mate, I, <laughs> I, I look at the, the game today and I go, you know, that's – I think it's like – I understand that we need to move forward as a game. I understand that, you know, maybe society is a little bit different. But I just don't think it's getting appreciated enough of how much – how big a part of the game that is of putting fear in your opponent. I had to build up to it, right? Mm. So I'd wake up in the morning and I'd have to get to that person. I know it sounds funny, but people won't understand. But mm. I had to build myself up where I've got to go out there and I've got to – so like you got to make shit up about him because mm. I'm as if I want to go out there and you know Jason Riles or someone like you don't want to go out there or Ben Riles you don't want to go out there and just injure someone you want to yeah. go out there and play really hard so then you get into a point and then if they said something then I'd just that's it you're looking for a reason kind of thing well that was the challenge that I yeah, needed okay. you know so some days if you're not challenged, you go along and you yeah. just pass the ball okay. and you're just okay. cruising. But the bigger the moment, I knew I had to get to a stage because you because you know that that moment might be there. Okay, okay. Right? Yep. And then yep. when the moment comes, mm. sometimes you're in control. Mm. And most of the time you were because you're hitting them and you're, and you're putting fear in them without even doing anything. Yeah, okay. And some days you're going and there's a bit more going on and then there's – the decisions aren't going your way mm. and there can be one thing you just go, hey, hold on, this is this ain't happening. <laughs> mate. Oh, mate, it's so, it's so good to watch as a fan. Um, <laughs> so so you move to Sydney when you're 19 and uh, basically 1993, obviously you made the grand final. You placed the, the play second row of the five games leading into it. But first I just want to talk about your debut. How did, do you remember the conversation at all? Like, how did it all come about? Because, like, to be in a grand final the second year, like, wow. Yeah, yeah it was pretty cool. Uh, my my first grade debut was against Wes, and it was the first year I was there. So <clears throat> I played, like, Jersey Flag. I played seven games, and then I broke my thumb, believe it or not, on mm. Anthony Bella. Martin Bella's younger brother's head. He's from Mackay. He beat me in every rep side. I'm playing for the Dragons. I get my chance. We're playing at Brookvale. No one's watching. I go to tackle him. He's... I hit his big head, break my thumb, so then I'm out for six weeks or whatever. Mm. That afternoon, I make the city side. Oh. My oh, doctor man. rings Nathan. No, yeah, doctors. So I rang the club doctor. He rings the other doctor. This kid broke his thumb. Can you kneel it? And he plays. He goes, absolutely. So I'm at training. I'm dropping balls because I can't. But I couldn't let anybody know that I broke. Play for city. They kneel it. They put a special cast made. Yeah. Play. Then I make the New South Wales side. So I don't play for five weeks. Oh. And then we go up the, the, to do that. And I come back and I'm like, well, that's my career. So Brian Smith was quite right. That could be it. Yeah. Okay. I had no contract. Mm. I was on a $3,000 scholarship, mm. which was rent. So I didn't sign a contract. It was rent for yeah. the year. Yeah. Then the play of the game, New South Wales, I come back and then that's what happened. So I would have had to go play park footy. So I played for Peakhurst Hawks. Mm. I think I'll have to go back and play for Peakers. And they said, oh, mate, someone got injured in the, like in reserve grade. So there was a spot in under 21s, mm. play under 21s against Manly. Played a couple more games. Someone got injured in reserve grade, played reserve grade. Then West were the best side mm. in under 21s. They beat us in the grand final that year. So then we're playing West at, at um, Cogger Oval in the last round. And Brian Smith goes, mate, we, we might play you – half a game and sit you on a bench for for first grade today. I'm like, 
one. So I've gone seven games, say four games, two games reserve grade. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, nowhere near ready. Yeah, yeah. So then I'm played under 21s because we didn't, because we couldn't have got any better on the ladder or yeah, whatever. Okay. So you didn't want to give, you know, the old fashioned days, you didn't want to give them too much. Mm. Played half a game under 21, sitting there, had a pie and stuff. Sitting there at half time, thinking, oh, it's cool because you warmed up with the A grade or, yeah, or the first yeah. grade. Yeah. At half time, we go in, he goes, you're on. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I like, like, I remember I got really emotional and I'm like, shit. And I remember my first run, I run into um, big, big Graham Wynn and he just tackled me and he just smashed me into the ground and he pushed his, and he pushed my head down and he got up and he, and he used to, just, and he just had a bit of chewy gum in his mouth. And they had Andrew Farrow, they had, like, Wes had a really good side that year. And then I lasted, I reckon, about 10 or 15 minutes. Mm. And just the excitement and that, I just run out of gas. Yeah, you know? okay. Yeah. And I certainly wasn't ready for it. But that's, I learned more more out of that game than any other game I played. Yeah, well. Wow. Because I had to work really hard then. Because I knew that they didn't, they weren't bigger and they weren't stronger, they weren't faster, they weren't athletically, I I wasn't intimidated. I didn't feel like I didn't belong there. Mm. But just how fast the game moved on me, I yeah. just remember the speed of it, and it probably wouldn't even have been a fast game. If I go back into it, <laughs> yeah. you know, playing, you go, oh, God, this was a slow game. Yeah. But it was super fast. Mm. So then I had to train really hard. That's all I knew. Did you find as well, like, you know, sometimes in, you know, under-19s, under-21s, you can take mental breaks and just be like, yeah. you know, whereas in NRL, it's just like every second of every minute you have to yeah. be ready to go that's well put. that's a winger did you just come up with that <laughs> did you just come up with that no but like you're right i heard a forward say it. <laughs> no you didn't hear me say it. but like but like you're right because you're always got to be on and and the moment you think your job's done is a moment the titans or the or the red cliff or those sides down the bottom you know when like when you think your job's done like at halftime they thought their job was done against red cliff it's never done in the nrl it's mm. just never done mm. so yeah like you're right i think when you're a, like when you get up in the first grade and then you play different teams and you're playing someone like an Andrew Johns and he's just like a computer. Yeah, he was just always watching us. I knew him, so I just so I knew I had to eyeball him mm. to let him know, mate. I'm watching you, and then I'm thinking, well, I got him, and you're looking at his running. So you're just trying to cover everything. But if you stop looking like if you got tired once because you're working, yeah, and you turn and you just must have looked up. He's gone. I've got him here. Got him. So you've always got to be on, yeah. With, especially with the good players in the big moments, yeah, absolutely. Because they're coming at you, yep. and that's their job. Mm. So they wait to see that moment of weakness, mm. Mm. and it's there. Yeah, it's it's funny how on a on a field you can kind of you can almost feel it sometimes when a team is broken. You, you can just it's you sense it, don't yeah, you? Yeah, there's just a feeling, and like as I said, I, I'm not some forward in the middle or whatever, but. You know, when Webby and that, like, I, like there's been games where not Webby had already retired, but like Big Pecho, I think it was like a Roosters grand uh, final game. Yeah. They came out and absolutely belt. It was so aggressive. It was Marco O'Mealy, all the oh, big yeah. dogs. They just went like, they just went hammer and tong at like K, at Lockie. And we just kept hanging in there, hanging in there. And then like 20 minutes to go, you could just, it's almost like you could feel this release in the game and you go, we got them. We got them. They yeah. just broke, you know? Yeah, that's. That's cool. Yeah, because you can. I don't know what it is. Hey, eh? you couldn't really. They describe. couldn't sustain it. They yeah. thought they were going to blow you off the park. And you could just hang in there long enough, and you yeah. win. Yeah, and that's a great lesson. Mm. Yeah, you know what I mean, because not every day you're going to go there and do your job properly, and you're going to have parts where you want to give in because mm. you could easily give in. And everybody went, "Mate, how good were the roosters?" It wasn't yeah. about how bad you were. It was yeah. about, but you said, "No, no, no, hold on. We just yeah. keep on doing our job here. Mm. Just keep on pushing." And it's pretty much what Redcliffe are doing now. Mm. Just keep on. Don't worry about that little fat bloke on the scoreboard. He'll do his job. But let's just keep on mm. doing what we do mm. and what we train to do. And then when it turns. You know, you just see the forwards starting to get a bit more energy and the big yeah. boys start to roll through. And then when they start to roll through, yep. you know, then the ball players start coming. It's pretty cool. So the next year, 93, uh, you make the grand final. You play second row with five games leading in, but then you get put on the bench uh, mm. for the, the final. What, what happened there? David, uh, there was a great back row at yeah. the Dragons. They had Scott Goulet, dual international, David Barnhill, state of mm. origin player, mm. um, and Brad McKay, so he was he was a lock. Uh, he played, I don't know, twenty state of origins and games for Australia, and went on tour. So that was the back row. David Barnhill pulled his or uh, did his calf. He tore his calf. So then I played, leading into the final. So I was sort of in and out of first grade, like when there was injuries. Mm. 
but that's probably the pecking order. I wasn't better than those guys at that time. And yeah, then okay. um, Jeff Hardy was there as well, um, and uh, Matty Elliott, the coach. So like then there was a there was a lot of talent sort of hanging around the Dragons. Yeah, okay. um, yeah so that's why I got sat on the bench, but that was probably the role that I had to play. Mm. And then um, Jason Stevens breaks his thumb in his first collision with. Glenn Lazarus, it was a compound fracture. We saw one with Munster. Mm. Munster gets it strapped up and comes back on. Our front rower went off. <laughs> Where are you, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> the producer, the movie producer now. No. So, like, we're in a WhatsApp group and they had to go, but, like, a compound fracture back then, is it's, it's horrible. I, no one expected Munster to come back yeah. on, you know, mm -hmm. but it already depends how it was. So, Big J, like, he was, he was a gun player, Jason Stevens, at the time, and... We needed someone, not to take on Lazarus, but someone out there just go and punch for punch yeah. with the Broncos forwards. And Jason was that guy for us. And when he went off, um, we sort of lost a bit. Like mm. it was going to be a really hard track. Brisbane, we beat them in, up there at, at old uh, QE2. QE2, yeah, yeah. We beat them like the last round leading in or whatever, or like yeah. two rounds. And they had to come from fifth. And they had to beat all the big sides. So they were wow. tired when they got to us. And yeah. I thought that was a grand final that the Dragons could have won. Mm. Or, yeah, that was another one that I thought we could have won, but we you, didn't. What do you remember the, the most from that game as a young fella? Like, is there anything that's Tina Turner. That? Tina Turner? Oh, because she – oh, wow. What was that like to be there for that? I heard a commotion outside the dressing room, so I opened up and I saw her there, mm. right? Mm. And I went, wow. And the lesson that I got out of that is I wasn't focused. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Right? So grand final day is cool because at the Talis house, I would put the television and our neighbours and friends would come over and we would sit around and watch the Brisbane and Sydney grand finals. It was a mm. – it's a barbecue day and everybody sits around. So mm. it was – I wanted to see part of the atmosphere. Yeah. The year before I played under 21s, so I got to enjoy grand final day. This mm. time I was there. And not that I – wasn't focused because I was sitting on the bench anyway, so I knew that I was going to get into the game. Mm. But that moment on, I just knew that no matter what happens, I don't care. Mm. You know, so when I went, I didn't care who was singing, what's going on. Mm. So after the game, Tino Turner came over and got a photo with us all. Um, I remember Brisbane just played at that speed. Mm. They played at a speed that was really hard to handle. What you just spoke about the Roosters after 60 minutes, you know, you just – you find that you got no gas left, mm. and that's that's how I sort of felt when we were playing Brisbane. They just played a played a really good style of footy mm. that took energy out of us. Yeah, um, and so you, the next year you make your debut, play the final two games of the series. Do you remember getting the call? State like of Origin. Brisbane? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? Um, I used to live in the St George area, mm. um, at the top of Carlton, and I used to get my hair cut over in the like Pecos, Penza, sort of Lugano area. Mm. There's a little hairdresser over there. And I remember going to the hairdresser to get a haircut mm. and this old lady, I shouldn't say that, this, this lady that had a few more years on her than myself goes, you're that Talos boy, you just made the state of origin. I'm like, I'm like yeah, okay. You know how they sit there with, and they get the perms and those big yeah, yeah, machines? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, nah, darling. Yeah. Queensland won, game one. Yeah. The Mark Troy, the Mark Coin miracle try. No way. That's game one. Oh my god! How many times Queensland changed their team? <laughs> Never. And if they win, <laughs> yeah. But Marty Bella was sort of towards the end of his career. Mm. Um, he got up, he played the ball sideways a couple of times, and then I didn't realise. So I go that, and I'm like, whatever. And I go out, and I ring my mum, and she's crying. No I, way. I made it. So my mum told me. That was pretty cool. Oh, man, that's so good. And then you get home and you had a little tape recorder and you had like 20-odd messages. So playing for Queensland for me is, it's, you know, Arthur Beetson wore the jersey, Wally Lewis. Mm. Like, mm. You know, I was seven when the first game was played, so to sit there and watch so many guys do their battle. And for New South Wales too, like, I love that game. Like, some of my heroes were wearing the New South Wales jerseys, but, you know, it was just a game that, you know, you'd wake up in the morning, Queensland would be happy or sad, and you, the, you know, the game of footy at Carriage on Primary School, you're always one of the players that played good, and the footies were yeah, like yeah, everybody yeah. take the footy, and yeah. you know, whoever you know owned the footy and you yeah. played with that, they were captains and picked their team, and yeah, you know, that's 
that's what the game can do, well, especially in a little community like mm. Townsville back in the day. Yeah, it's it's so um, – like the impact of Origin, it, it it's genuinely – when, like, for example, like, let's say New South Wales lose, I was, I'll just talk about Queensland. In Queensland, if we lose, you wake up the next day and you walk around, everyone's genuinely down, sad. Sad. It's, yep. It's just like the state gets depressed. Yeah. It and is. you know that. Yeah. And, and, like, I remember, like, so the first time I go, so I walk in there, Wally Lewis is the coach, Mal Manning is a captain. Mm. I'm like, wow. i I got their autographs. Mm. I'd had their autographs. Like it's like, like, and then Trevor Gilmeister and Alan Langer and Steve Walters and like Steve Ranoff and Michael Hancock and Willie Kahn. Oh and wow! Like these guys and I'm saying you know, and then Jack, and I'm like, oh my god! Yeah. Like I'm twenty. Yeah. You know, it was oh, it, yeah. it was um it it's cool and once you're part of the family and Billy Moore and Gary Larson and you know once you're part of that family you're part of the family mm. you know and that's. And that's the great thing. And then I remember how they made me feel. And any time I ended up wearing the jersey and a new kid comes in, you got to – well, fast forward, I played 10 years of Origin and the guy that came in on my last game was Cameron Smith. Mm. You know? Oh, wow. No you know, so, I, so, yeah. So I told Cameron that I was <laughs> – You passed the torch? <laughs> he had his own. <laughs> Do you know you go to fast up and he goes, no, I mate, I've got my own. <laughs> you go to, here, man. mate, here, this is everything I know. He goes, no, mate, that's all right. It's all right. You keep that. It's yours, baby. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, but like Origin's, Origin's special for all the efforts that you do. I'll just tell one origin story, and mm. it was about Paul Bowman. So like, when you talk about moments, you got Michael DeVere that you probably played with the yeah, Chief. Mickey, D, Mickey DeVere. Right? Yep. He got split. I hit him. Yeah, I'm the one that hits him high. Yeah, he gets stapled. He doesn't do that at the Broncos, or probably Mick does. Mm. Mick, Mick. <laughs> but poor Bowman, we're in a tackle together, and he wouldn't get up. And I'm like, get up. And he just drags himself up, and he gets the marker. Then he goes again, and he goes again. And I fast forward. So three tackles later, he gets up and he just jumps in front of one of the New South Wales Willie Mason or something. And he gets knocked out, sort of thing. And then they get him up, and Gary Belcher makes him run off. He did his knee. He was out for like. 12 weeks. Wow. But he had to get up because it was origin mm. and he got the marker and he kept on getting up and he's limping and then the footage now you see him running on one leg. I'm like, but that's what, like that's origin to me. You yeah. got Morris that's injured. He's getting treated. Greg Inglis <laughs> makes a break. He gets up yeah. and he limps and he goes, so there's stories like that with every, yeah. you know, and it wouldn't be, and that's what makes origin special. I think because players do, players and their effort in those moments, there's more moments, but um, some of those moments and what the players put themselves through in mm. those two jerseys is unbelievable. Yeah, the mental toughness to just keep yeah. going when 99.9% .9 of blokes would just, yeah. nah. Yeah, it's the only time I've ever tasted blood. Oh, you know, yeah, like, you know, when your lungs, you oh just, you like, yeah, like you're, like you're burning. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I didn't do it in many other games. Holy. I didn't push myself that hard, but an <laughs> origin. But and 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 some of them can go like that. So I'm. I always made a point, like my biggest point: don't look at the clock. Yeah. Don't look at play the moment. Play the moment. Play the meme. Do that. What are we looking at? You know, mm. team. And you just keep on ticking all the boxes that I needed to tick in my head. Mm. If you looked up at the scoreboard once, you look up again. You know, like, yeah, you're like you're like you're like so, so like never look up until they score and you okay we've got 15 minutes so we're back on track and mm. and it's more that check don't look up when you're tired yeah okay yeah you know i mean so like of course you've got to check the clock if we're chasing points and go, yep. okay well maybe we've got to pull the trigger here or whatever but because your look, space is in the wrong space if you're looking yeah looking up and go, maybe we've got to hang in here yeah wow yeah I, yeah like because i just saw it if i looked it no matter it'll like it's not going to make it go quicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yep. only makes it go slower. Yeah. If you look at something, if mm. you if you look at a clock. Oh man, forever. <laughs> Seriously, forever. <laughs> oh god, where's the finish line? <laughs> My missus does that when I'm telling a story. She's like, "This is honestly going for infinite. What is going on here?" <laughs> um, so, is there anything you remember from your first game, your debut? Is there? Is there was it? So was uh, it at Suncorp or ANZ? Uh, it was at. It was at. Um, it was at the MCG. Oh, the MCG. I think it was 94,000 yeah. June 6th. No way. Yeah. Um, 94,000 yeah. people. Yeah. Uh, I remember Glenn Lazarus sort of runs. There was a shepherd. Um, it was pretty slippery that night. I remember 
Benny Elias coming out of dummy half, mm. and I see it like a, like I saw him come out. There. Here's my fucking moment. Mm. I'm, I've squared him up, so I know that he can't go. Mm. And it's on the cricket pitch in the middle. Oh, so yeah, I'm thinking, yeah. yeah, he's fucked here. Yeah. <laughs> so because you because you can't lose your footing, and as I squared him up, because the markers are chasing him, and I'm here, so he can't go anywhere. I thought mm. oh, you're gone, and I've just gonna hit him here as hard as I could. Yeah, yeah. He ducked underneath me. Oh, Benny, how, mate, how, how great he was. Yeah. Dark. He's gone straight underneath me. I've hit the cricket pitch. I'm sliding. Yeah. Like Paul Mercurio in like Strictly Boring or something. <laughs> so I'm sliding on my knees, like dancing with the stars, going across and all the skins off my knees. So that was, that was probably one of my early origin moments. But it was just trying to make a difference and but making it at the wrong time picking yeah. the wrong moment mm. yeah i mean those like those moments come right mm. but don't chase it because they'll always be there for you but, yeah you know but that's um and just just running out like just running out there and and i remember elf and kevy one game like you're like like you'd run it and they because they see that you're nervous because mm. you're running on and it's big for you like the, you're looking down at your jersey for 40 minutes before you get on yeah. you know you just it's pretty cool like yeah. you sleep in your tracksuit seriously yeah you know like you put and then often that would call a move and they'd call it in russian or something like, and they call it and i'm like oh, i didn't i didn't hear that i'm trying to like I'm, and i'm sitting there and but like then they just know and then they laugh at you and i go mate just relax it's yeah, a game it's all you know what i mean so yeah so then that's the great balance to have those two guys out there mm. doing that but it's yeah origin there's so many moments but the moments that i remember are the ones that are like like early in this piece was the moments that i watched mm. i enjoyed more than when i played mm, okay. you know what i mean like the moments that i've watched excuse me um, um recently or the moments that i watched before i played in the jersey are my favorites you know yeah okay that's interesting like like the billy slater try when he oh, the kick. kicks and kicks matty bones intercept um cooper cronk i had my little son jacko on my lap when cooper cronk kicks that field goal and I jumped up and I've forgotten. He's flowing. <laughs> he been, like, well, we're at Lang Park and I'm like, and he's kicked it and I've jumped. But I, did, I didn't know because he's like about seven <laughs> and he's just flowing over three people in front of us. I'm like, oh no. So I'm a fan. You know what I mean? Like, then, yeah. you know, like, then I'm, I'm not a yeller and screamer, but I'm a get in there. Yeah. You know, yeah. Get, get up. You know, like, like, I like I'm holding I'm my breath. I'm the same, mate. I'm the I'm, same. I'm just holding my breath. Yeah. Oh, get, oh, yeah. oh God. You Even know, like moving your head with it. <laughs> Like my missus is always like, what the is wrong with you? Like, yeah, you're, you're doing this while watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a bird in a cage, not a bloke in the bar. <laughs> yeah, no, but that's a mm. yeah, my, but that's what the game does to grown men. Mm. Yeah, oh, <laughs> mate, we love it. We absolutely love it. So, um, and then uh, the next year, the next year, this is a hilarious story. They allegedly ninety five. You almost have a punch on with Brian Smith at training. Is this true yeah, or not true? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't nearly have a punch. I wasn't pushing and shoving, but I told him. <laughs> Walk us through us, Gordy. What, what, what happened? Well, it wasn't professional, right? Mm. Like, as like so if, if they put on a session, they'd have to get a trainer in or whatever. So, as I said, it was Brian, Rod Reddy, and the reserve – um, and Perry Haddock or – I think Matty Elliott was coaching by then. And we had one trainer, it's in Scotty Campbell, who's sort of still around the game at certain clubs. And uh, they, boys, do you want to get the sprint coach in this week? I thought, oh, yeah, okay. Because it's cool. So you just get off and you do sprint session for about an hour and break the day and you'd go down to Cronulla Beach and have a swim or whatever. So we weren't working at the time. Then I forgot my mum was coming mm. to, like, to see me and, and stay. So I'm like, oh, God. Brownie, I can't go. So it was myself, Brownie, I think, Chalk, Noel Goldthorpe, and two others said they were going to go. So, yep, they'll get the coach. Mm. I go pick up mum, come back Thursday. Didn't think anything of it. It was a Wednesday day off. It was an extra session. It wasn't a session I missed. Oh, okay, so just extras. It was just an extra that yeah. I said I was going to do and I didn't okay. go. And, yep, I, yep, yep. and then Brian Smith on Thursday goes, hey, mate, where were you? I said, oh, I had to pick up mum mm. from the airport. I forgot. He goes, oh, what, she going to help you this weekend? <sighs> No, no, he did. So like them, because Brian didn't like if he's a doctor, he he he's got no bedside manners. You know, like mm, he's mm. like mate and a chef. Like they got no table manners. That's mm. why there's waiters, right? So <laughs> yeah. so sometimes <laughs> Brian Smith. Point. So Brian Smith can't come out and deliver the message. So and he said, I said, what? He goes, oh, my, well, is she going to help you this weekend? I said, Brian, I said I was going to go. I haven't seen my mum for six months. Mm. She's 
flown into Sydney, I was going to pick her up from the airport. Yeah. And he said, oh, and he had another crack. I said, shut up. He goes, listen to your son. I said, don't ever call me son because you're not good enough to be my father. Yeah, well, yeah. And he said something else. I said, one more, I'll fucking get up. And then Corny and all the boys jumped in. So I lost my shit. I just went home. Then I wasn't going to play for him again. It was that serious. Wow. So I just sat at home, didn't go to training. I just went home and then um, then he rings me game day. He said, I want you to play. Mm. He apologised. Yeah. I said, don't ever give me another game plan and I'll play. And I know it sounds funny, but it was probably the best 10 games I played for the club from that moment. And he knew then after it, when we walked across the field to think it was our last game of the year. He said, thanks for that. I said, that's all right. Because I'm professional, but I didn't have to... I didn't like him from that moment on. Like yeah, we had a fallout. Yeah. Like we had a huge. Don't, don't bring family into it. It's a yeah, game. For sure. It's a sport. Mm. He probably said the wrong thing in hindsight. He probably doesn't remember it because he's a coach and he's you know yeah. pushing. Brian Smith's a button pusher, mm. but some people you don't push their buttons. Yeah, oh, simple absolutely. as that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if you push them, some buttons there's a cool and a cute one. You got to find that one. Yeah. Don't find that one that's gonna poke him. It's it's a good point because like I think some coaches struggle with like one size fits all sometimes yeah cookie cutter approach and there's it's like some people need an arm around them yes some people need mate you need to pull are your you talking in. about tony carroll there no not tons <laughs> don't up. you bring up tons oh, i've never no way the great tons are oh the great storyteller story um but i just yeah. think that like a lot of coaches think they think and that's what, fits all. And that's Wayne Bennett's mm. skill, isn't it? Yeah, I oh, so Boom, good just at talk to you. It. Doesn't talk footy. Brian Smith has footy mm. here. Mm. As for the dressing room mm. chat is here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where yeah. where Wayne's dressing room chat mm. and what to say to you or this and when to blow up, when not to blow up. Yeah. Is first class. It's yeah. it's a politician. It's a people management. He's yeah. a manager. Oh mate. And, and as you you know You see like, that at the Dolphins now. It's his just, message. Oh well, my don't. But I had nothing to do with it. Yeah. He straight away he just gets the messages. He's that. Then in the dressing room, he'd say, "Boys, that's blah blah blah." Mm. So the mixed messages go on. They don't know which yeah. ones it is, and he's cuddling he's them, and he knows. And he's a pro. He's good at it. Yeah. Oh mate, he just, uh, as you know, his ability to like, uh, like, for example, I remember we we were going out midweek with uh, Justin Hodges and Carmichael, me and Darius, <laughs> and so we're going out midweek. Karen, Young kids ca- thinking we were killing cool, yeah. you, know, you know what it's like. Yeah. We're carrying on like dickheads. Um, anyway, he calls us in the office and he goes, boys, I've heard you've been out, you know, drinking on Wednesday. And we were like, well, Hodge and Kay are going out midweek. And he was like, are you Justin Hodges and Carmichael Hunt? Can you do what they do? No. So fucking don't go out in the midweek. But it, it, and so to, to, to not identify that and think, because like everyone tries to go, oh, everyone's equal, but everyone's no. not equal. Everyone is not equal in a footy side. No, don't think that you are. Yeah, it's crazy. It's the famous, that famous gridiron coach. I said, oh, what happened? No, no, he wins me games. Mm. I said, oh, mate, oh, what about your quarterback? He goes, no, no, he wins me games. He yeah. can he can turn up an hour late. Yeah. You can't. <laughs> yeah, 100%. And that's. And that's but normally the good ones, you know. What I mean, are there on time and yeah, they do it. Yeah. And then that was the same as our era, you mm. know. What I mean, if if the big boys went and had a beer mm. and the young kids, you know, tag along because we used to get drink cards. Oh, so I work way. I remember the drink cards. So yeah. mate, like when you get the five hundred or the thousand dollar drink card, so you'd go there. <laughs> yeah. Then the first couple of times I've like used it. Wayne goes, "You go out." I'm like, "Yeah." He goes, "Big night." I said, "No, not really. I just had a heap of mates out." I'm like. He knows I'm going out. Yeah. I'm thinking, it's my drink card. So then the manager goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He brings up, he gets... Right so then all the young kids are coming in. And I say, hey, boys, get me a beer. I said, mate, when yours runs out, you can use mine, don't worry about it. Because like everybody had 200 or 500 or 1,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, boys, you're not going to run out. So then I'm just telling the bartender, just put them on all the other boys' drinks. <laughs> so then Wayne never ever knew that I was out <laughs> with the other boys. So good. Yeah. But, oh, so and good. then like, all the time I would ask him, I said, mate, hey, Wayne, what, um, <laughs> Wayne, what room are you in? He goes, oh, mate, I'm in 20. I said, yeah. I said, um, I might have to drop something up. He goes, yeah, sweet. I didn't. I was one of these room numbers. We put all our coffees and beers on his room. <laughs> but then I knew that he'd never complain because he never paid his bill. <laughs> the club used to <laughs> pay his bill. The club used to pay it. So, oh, <laughs> like, so I never got him. Oh, that's great. <laughs> oh, oh, that's so the next year, though, the Super League War hits. And obviously, you sit out for the season. Yep. Walk us through the whole situation, how it come about, what was your thinking about the whole situation? Well, 
I'm laying in bed and I get a phone call at six o'clock in the morning as my manager, Georgie Mimas, going, mate, something's broken the game. I can't tell you. I'm flying back to Sydney, don't sign anything. And it was a game day. Mm. I'm like, that's weird. Mm. He goes, mate, hopefully I'm at the game today. Don't sign it. And then we get to the game and the club, Jeff Carr and all the ARL guys go, mate, if you don't sign this, you don't play. Wow. I said, Jeff, I went to grade 10. Mm. I don't know my contracts. So yeah, that's what yeah. I've got a manager for. I said, I don't know. He goes, oh, mate, well, if you don't sign it, and it's 20000 mate, 30000 50000 Like, it was pretty good money, right? Mm. So you imagine just sign it, stay at the same club, but we give you 50000 mm. Some guys are signing it. I said, no. Well, by the end of the night, it was two hundred. Yeah, wow. So then myself and Nathan Brown, the next morning, mm. we didn't do anything. We drove into... Uh, it was like Phillips Road in uh, in the city. In one room there was James Packer, Phil Gould and Bob Fulton. So you'd go in there and you'd negotiate your new NRL contract. At the same club, you just sign your new contract. So then we went in and then, you know, you were hearing what some players were getting. And if you played State of Origin, it was about 450. If you're playing for Australia, it was about 650. If you're a legend, yeah. it can be from seven up. Yeah. Right, so we were going in negotiating, and then we got Phil Gould, and he said, "Oh, mate, I don't think he's worth that. He's a be-. and he wasn't rude. He was just like, he goes, mate, he's a bench player, but mm. that I didn't like that. He goes, mate, he's a bench player. Uh, he goes, well, he played Origin, yeah, but he, Queensland got beaten. He was the new. Of course we did, but don't have to. Yeah. So it was sort of that sort of negotiation, and I didn't like it. Then I walked out. I walked into the next. I walked past, and, ja- and James Packer goes, "What are you doing?" Mm. I said, "Oh." Phil Gould just called me a bench player. He goes, come in here, I'll give you 650 and come to the Roosters. And I'm thinking, well, Gus is coaching the Roosters. He doesn't. So that's how crazy. That's in one day. I've wow. gone from playing on that to getting offered 20 to 650. And then the, and that's when the negotiations started. Yeah, okay. So so that's a young kid from Townsville playing a game on a 3,000. Stage, 22? Yeah, 21. So I was a, on a $3,000 scholarship, ended up playing first grade. I'm, say, 50 games in. Mm, wow. Far out. 40 something games into my NRL career, and then this sort of broke. So you didn't really know because on one side it was, you know, Super League on the other side. So you just had to trust your process. So I was playing at the Dragons. Mm. We all sat there one day and we had a vote, and we were going to stay as a club and go to Adelaide. Okay. Wow. That would have been cool. So, so what? Adelaide. Dragon. Yeah. So like we all had a meeting in the cool room. That we all put up our hand and back in those days there was 60 in the club and it was like about 55 to 3 to go that, you know, we'll all go and we'll be the St. George because of pen foals, we'll go yeah. play in Adelaide. Wow. Um, and so the players were all on board. Adelaide. Yeah, well, yeah, and then it's up to you to get a contract. Yeah. That would have been pretty cool because we were a really good young side back then with Mundine and Steve yeah, and yeah. Brownie. We had some really good kids coming through too, like as well, like Lance Thompson and the like. And mm. So, um, yeah, so we would have had a pretty good side and then – we didn't, and then I end up going and sitting down with Super League. And the reason why I end up signing with Super League is because I could pick my club. And by then, the Dragons had been eaten up. So Nathan Brown, my mate, I think had signed with Cronulla. Mm. Chock had maybe gone to the Bulldogs. Jason Stevens went. So the side that I was going to stay and play with mm. was that. And then uh, I went to Super League because I could have played with any club and a club I wanted to play for was playing in Brisbane wow. and they were named the Broncos. So then that's – and then I sat there for about a month in a holding pattern because mm. Brisbane didn't – or well, Super League didn't really want that to happen because mm. it looks like that they're favouring the Broncos when they weren't. Mm. I just said, well, no, no, you sign me. That's who I want to go play for. That's the deal. It wasn't the money. Mm. It was actually less money than the other organisation, but I had a chance to go play for Brisbane. Wow. And so what, what was the catalyst for – sitting out like why could well you then i play? well then i went up there and i trained i did the whole pre-season because mm. the competition had kicked off right yeah. so then they did all the commercials so as far as you were concerned that the competition was playing there was going to be two competitions mm. the arl and the super league competition so i trained with brisbane and then judge birch um they put an injunction on it in court or whatever so th- Super League didn't go didn't go ahead, so it all come back in together, and then it was a twenty team competition. Okay. That's how Perth and all those guys I think got into the competition, you know. Yep. Or well, no, because then they were already in it, but they come back, and then I trained with Brisbane, and everybody filtered back to their club, and I was up in Brisbane. I'd sold my house, I had nowhere to yeah. come and live, and I thought, oh, 
And they said, just wait here. We'll go and negotiate a release. Yeah, a release. Wow. And to to this day, St. George did everything right. Mm. Like they did, they had a right. They didn't let me play. And there's players that do it now and they don't make them sit out. Mm. They end up letting them go. I just wish that the game at some stage and and it's not for the player but just for the game and the fans in general mm. if i didn't want to play for that club i had a contract you don't play mm. just because you have a full out with the coach or whatever you yeah. can't just walk out so i got punished yeah wow so and then i sat out of here because i felt loyal to brisbane and i felt and it, and then that was really tough you know but i was going down and the dragons because then i was on this money they they boost the money, like oh, they beef the money up. David Waite was the coach, and mm. it, it just, it, it just, it's not a regret. I would have done the same thing because mm. Dad. Because I remember going back to Dad, and I was a bit upset one day. And Dragons were having this fantastic year. They played in the grand final, <laughs> that year. and um, he said, "What did you say?" I said, "I was well. If I if it didn't get up, I was going to sit out of here. He said, well, be a man of your word." Mm. So that was it. So that's why I brought you up. Don't you dare go back on your word. Yeah. Well, so then after having that, like if Dad would have said, hey, listen, mate, you said it. Yeah. But he didn't. No, no, you said it. Stick to it. Mm. You know? Was there any part of you going, oh, yeah. I'll, just, I'll go pay, play the year out and then come up or anything like that or no? No, I signed with Jeeps Rugby Union. Mm. Mate, I went to play Rugby Union. Yeah, well. And then they put an injunction on me from playing that as well. So I couldn't do anything. Um, part of me, I felt sorry for Nathan Brown and Goldie and Corny and all those guys that, like, I'm still friendly with today. And, mm. you know, I mean, like, and I wish I went back, but we all made our decisions, yeah. right? Like, some of those guys went and played for the Roosters. Mate, we all made our mm. choices. And uh, sitting out a year wasn't one that I wanted to make, but I said it when at first I made, what happens if they go, well, I have to sit out a year, won't I? Yeah. I said, I won't go back. I said, no, I'm, and it was more showing that I was committed to Brisbane. To no, Brisbane. no, 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 I've come here. I'm not. There's no foot in either camp. I'm a Bronco now. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? I, yeah. I've made my decision. I've signed in this competition. This competition's that. And that's what it was about. So, yeah, wow. Um, that's a crazy time. What a crazy time in rugby league. It eh? was. And then I was 21. So you talk about all those moments and you don't think that you're ever going to get back to it. Mm. So then it was fine. Then 97 rolled around. 97 rolls around. Um, and basically, so play with the Broncos. They won the Super League comp. Uh, you know, you had an incredible year. You also picked for Australia, but walk us through that '97 win with the Broncos. It was cool. What a it side! Was cool. Great side. Oh my god! Yeah, that it was. Uh, I think Darren Lockyer and Steve Renouf <sighs> show that night. I think uh, Pearl scored a hat trick. Um, it was in Brisbane. I think it was sixty odd thousand. It was the biggest crowd in Brisbane at the time wow. because they built all, you know, temporary seating. Um, but it was really cool. Mm. Um, I didn't have a great year, and that grand final, it felt, it felt I got a bit of justice for sitting out a year because that's what you wanted to do. And yeah. Um, yeah, Newcastle had Newcastle kept rugby league in the hope alive because when they won that grand final in '97 and beat Manly, mm. it was like I was part of that. Like I was, you know, we're talking. I had I was going for Newcastle. You just yeah, wanted because yeah. Manly yeah. were the best side in the '94 '95 season. Like they were a really good side. They won. I think in '96, mm. and then Newcastle topple them. It's it's that was really cool. And then they say our grand final. It felt like a grand final. It felt like the others. Yeah. To me. Yeah. So, okay. Um, and then we had to cement it the next year. So when we came back, Wayne never built us up for too many games. But when we played Newcastle in about round ten of marathon, he goes, "Boys, because it was building as a Super Bowl. You yeah, know, yeah. two big Who conferences. Who would have won if they were in the same conference? Yeah, or, uh, yeah. And we." And yeah, and we beat them that night. We played oh, really good. Wow! So that was cool to beat Newcastle in our next game. Yeah, right. Mm. And then we won that grand final that year mm. as well. And that, that was, was probably the best Bronco side I played with. I yeah. don't want to disrespect the others, but that team, that '98 side. Yeah, wow, geez, that'd be hard to beat. You would have had Darren Locker in his second or third year of fullback. Yeah, the Pearl still playing. No, Pearl. Uh, oh yeah, no, yeah, Stephen. No, Tony Carroll was the centre with Darren Smith. Tunza. Yeah, Wendell and Michael to Via. Um, Pearl, I think Pearl had gone He'd to gone Wigan. Yeah, Wigan. Wigan. Yeah. Wow. And then so you always got Alf. Alf, Alf Kirby, still there. Kirby. Um, Webby. Webby. Yeah, it was cool. Oh man. Gorney. Was it? Was your Kevin nine? Campion? 
mate, Kevin Campion was a very underrated player. He ended up going to the Warriors, yeah. didn't he? For a bit? Phil Lee was a great player too. Yeah, yeah. Phil Lee had terrible knee injuries, but Phil Lee mm. was a player that could have went to any level. Like, yeah. like he's he's sneaky unless you play with Phil. You know that whatever game he plays, and he'll he'll end up getting the guys in front yeah. of him. So like, wow. like yeah. So you got to defend him. So so you're going into the the '98 Grand Final, and you also that year as well you get a chance to play against uh, the Dragons. Was there any personal kind of feelings there, or did you yeah, moved a on? shitload? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah it was a shitload. Well, because you're playing against you're playing against the no, 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 not against the no. But it's personal because you want to. No, I didn't hate no. Mm. No, I actually love the Dragons. You yeah, know, like okay. them. when I see that jersey, when I saw it on Anzac Day, mm. it means, oh, that's my first ever jersey. That that was the club that gave me my opportunity. Mm. So it's sad what they're going through now. Mm. Um, Do you think it was personal more in the sense of like per, a fight with yourself to play well? That's all what it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't personal. The players didn't do it. Yeah, you know. Th- um, David Waite wasn't part of the decision. Yeah, all the board members that were there. I, I would have done – I would have made the same decision yeah, okay. as them. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it was a negotiation that went bad. Mm. So um, I just wanted to play good. Yeah. I just wanted to play good. Mm. So I, I sort of – that was one of those games where I built myself up way too much mm. and I was buggered. After like 15 minutes I come off and Wayne goes – I said, Wayne, I've got no gas because I must have played the game in my head. You know, So you're just thinking about it and it's all built up and that's yeah. – and that's another lesson that – so then from any other big games I played, I didn't even think about it. Just mm. switch off. Don't worry about it because the game will be there. You know that yeah. – don't worry, mate. Turn up at 7 o'clock. That was a, that was a big moment then. So yeah. from that moment on, I never built myself up for any games because I know by the time I'm there, it's going to come. It'll happen. Yeah. It'll happen. So, yeah, but that was a good night. Yeah. Scored it like I was – I played really bad. I just scored that one try, which is in the highlights. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't a good one. <laughs> hey, it's in the history books now, the highlights. It's in the history books, yeah, I played good and I look at that. And, and that, No, it was like one run, please. One run in 80 minutes. Um, but I'm glad it happened. And also, uh, so 98, you that's the second comp you guys win. So it's, you know, some would say it's not back-to-back. I, I consider it back-to-back in my opinion. Well, it's, it's not because we didn't play against everybody, but it's it, – Cemented L ninety seven. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. If Newcastle come and beat us, they're the best side in those two years. Yeah, fair, fair, fair. Uh, you also win a Clive Churchill. Yep. I mean, who would have thought, young fella yeah. from not North Queensland? Do you know that Tony Carroll? We spoke about him before. Yeah, the great Tunza. Every time he sees me, he tells me that it's his. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it is his. He, he, he was outstanding. Okay, he was okay. outstanding, right? Okay. But he didn't get it. He didn't get it. It's in, it's in my undie <laughs> drawer. It's not in your undie drawer, Tony. It's my, no, yeah, that's that's a cool moment. You know yeah. I mean, to win like that's just a dream. And um, you know, a coach once said, you know, what makes an Australian player or what makes a man of the match? Well, it's their opinion. It's three people's like opinion, I suppose. Winning players, players mm. are better, or being a player that you know your teammates want to play yeah, with. But sure. um, it is a medal that gets given out on, and yeah, I mean like. Like we watched some grand finals and it could go to two or three guys. Absolutely. And I think that was one of those grand finals mm. and I'm just glad that I've got it. It's just, uh, you know, as we spoke a bit earlier, how, you know, the, the, the idea of Gordy Tallis is so much bigger than just yourself. So I, I don't think you, I guess, appreciate the fact that, like, in such a historic win, you know, to cement the Broncos as... Because, like, if, if Broncos don't go on and win that 98 grand final... Then the 97 one be kind of come, oh, yeah, it was because they were over mm. in the Super League. That's why they did yeah. it. But you guys came in and said, nah, fuck that. We are the best in the comp. You yes. know what I mean? And to be the to get the Clive in, the, in a game like that, oh, yeah, I, I cool. think it's incredible, mate. I think it's incredible. Thank you. Um, and you also – so you played in the, 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 the 97 Super League Australian side. Yep. What was that? That would have been a bit strange. Unbelievable. So cool. What was it? What was it? Well, I got to play with Laurie Daly and – Andrew Reddinghausen and Brett Mullins and Bradley Clyde, Steve Walters. So I got still a stacked as side. Absolutely. Holy. Glenn Lazarus, Gunshot. Wendell Saylor, yep. Steve Renolf, Alan Langer. Wow. Kev, like it's a, it's still a very good yeah, side. Kev, wow. like, yeah. So, and you go to England it's the first time you went and there's you know like you know, Kernsey and it, 
it was a good side. Thorny, I think, was in it as well. So, like, then it's not a bad side. Holy. Yeah, so it, it's... um. I mean, it's almost a side outside of maybe one or two players that would have... Well, obviously, the Fittler, the Johnses yeah, and yeah. Paul Harrigan. Yeah. Maybe from from the others, but... Outside of that, you're looking at a pretty... Yeah, yeah, like outside, and might have been a couple others that yeah. sort of slotted their way into it. And that comes down to the selectors, you know, mm. um, opinions on certain positions. But, mm. you know... Th- I'd always back the team. Of course, like you're a footy player. I yeah. backed the teams that I played in. Yeah, yeah. You know, I would have backed my – like the Super League Queensland team against the others, I would have backed that that Super League Australia, even though they're both Australian teams and they would have had a, an amazing side as well. But, mm. you know, it would have been a great game. Mate, how, how strange would that have been seeing two Australian teams playing each other? Oh, yeah. Um, but what was it like, though, just to put on that green and gold? It was really cool because, you know, the – Go represent your country and play. I played at the old Wembley, mm. which was really cool. And mm. and uh, and it wasn't about who wasn't there for us. It was about me being there. And I remember like the eighty two kangaroo tour, the eighty six, and getting up early and watching, mm. you know, the Invincibles and that. So for me, it was just following in the greatest players of our game's footsteps. And you know, the England people they they were in Super League. They they thought they were playing Australia. Yeah. yeah. We were playing against the best English side. There wasn't two English sides. Yeah, yeah. There was one. Yeah. And they were coming. Yeah. It was Great Britain. And then um, I remember like Laurie Daly was outstanding mm. in game one. Then we got beaten in game two. And then, you know, we got a, the old fashioned England play and you're playing at Allen Road and the crowd's right up on you. And it's just, that, that was a really good tour. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. Do you, do you remember anything from your first kind of game when you, you put on the, the green and gold and looked down and go, oh, my God? Yeah, it was but it was a different jersey. The yeah. Super League jersey had the V and it had a blue in because that's one of Australia's national colours is oh, a blue. okay. So it wasn't so green So it was the green. No, no, it was a beautiful green. Okay. And it had yellow, but it had a blue. Like like oh, uh, the okay. V was yellow and blue. Yeah, it's okay. a good-looking jersey, but it's not – it the wasn't the ARL. Yeah, It okay. wasn't the traditional – Wally Lewis walking out. I want to have look. a look at this jersey now. Cause yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, so, do you remember anything from the game at all? Laurie Daly being absolutely brilliant. Yeah, when wow. I asked the game, like, like just, just the crowd, the seeing you're playing at Wembley, and you hear so much about Wembley on some of the famous, obviously, soccer games to the big Challenge Cup games. There, it was. It's pretty cool. Oh yeah, I'm having a look at it now. Is okay. there a bit of blue? Is yeah. there a bit of blue in it? Yeah, yeah, there's a bit of dark blue in it. There. there you go. You probably signed it. It's not a bad looking jersey. Hey, it's cool as I, I, I like it. I like it. Um, <laughs> okay, so you obviously you make that 97 side. Yeah. 90. Yeah. So games, man. Like it's just. Yeah, like if I watched it, it'll sort of jolt. But you know, I've never watched any of the grand finals or anything. Really? I've never watched any of my games back. What what do you think? Only the that highlights is? that that like you'll Come see. Come up on thing, eh? Yeah. What do you reckon that is? Just, it's just. I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 don't, I, I could sit and watch the if the eighty nine grand finals on, or there's mm. a grand final that I haven't played, and I'll sit and watch it. Yeah. But I haven't got ours, or and plus they haven't come across. Mm. Yeah. You know? mm. But wow, because what's it's four premierships? Uh yeah, three. Uh, I won three. Ninety seven, ninety eight, two thousand. Two thousand. Wow. Lost uh, 03. I mean, uh, sorry, a 93. Lost. Oh, yeah, because you just dragged it. Yeah. Um, okay, so. Not a bad looking jersey, huh? <laughs> not a bad looking jersey at all. No, so I don't watch it. So so for me to remember back, like I'm 50 soon, so like that's mm. yeah, that's a long time ago. But just, just going and how the English, you know, like I remember playing at one of the grounds, and they started singing Take Your Stars Off Our Flag, You Convicts. Oh, really? Yeah, which is, yeah. I so took that to heart. Yeah. Well, I took that to heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, a bit. Absolutely. Yeah, you know I mean, but when but going back there this year, after, like, for because I hadn't been back to England for 20, and then going to soccer games and sitting in that crowd, it's just banter. Yeah. They just love it. There's, there's no malice in what yeah. they sing, but when you're out there and they start singing songs about the Aussies and convicts mm. or whatever, you, yeah, it can get under your skin <laughs> a little bit. I don't know whether their teammates <laughs> – yeah, I don't know whether the, the English boys appreciate it if they're firing up the opposition. Yeah, yeah, 100%. 100%. Um, 
And so basically your regular, um, obviously in Queensland, until about 98 to 2003, talk us through. I mean, I saw actually saw you talking about this recently, but you're running with Bill Harrigan. <sighs> it is just, mate, it is so There was two crazy. knock-ons. We can see them. So for everybody on the blog, I know they watch this. You're the number one podcast. There was two knock-ons. <laughs> so, then I was, so then I was sort of giving it – because. Queensland, so we've spoken about what Queensland means. We're playing at, I think it was called Telstra Stadium at the time. It was a hard place to win. I don't think we'd won there for a long time. Mm. You know, like, or like it was a tough place for us to win a series in Sydney. Get off to a start, two knock-ons. I go and I'm yelling and the, and the linesman, as soon as I looked at him, he's like waving to his wife in the crowd. He's not even looking at him. Oh. <laughs> and then Bill Arrigan just went, no, nah. and I'm like, oh. He said, Bill, you saw two. He goes, just play on. I'm like. Oh, and they're going back and then I end up saying you won't be here in game two Stephen Clark's a better referee <laughs> and then we shoot right over to the other side New South Wales had so much ability they scored in the far corner and I run over and said you've got to go back and check that because the technology might have just come back in I didn't mm. know how far they could go back so you've got to go back and check that yeah. he goes nah, boom. and I'm like oh god I said you're a cheat <laughs> he goes what'd you call me I said you're a cheat and, and added some more words <laughs> he goes just go I went yeah. <laughs> then I go and see him So then straight after the game I walk in and apologise Because I should never have spoken to him that mm. way right? Mm. So in the heat of the battle Stepped over But I always say I was not sitting there thinking of mum and dad With their kids on the couch You don't mm. Not in an origin not, oh, in a, no. not in a moment Like I don't You know So I apologise to all the family And then Bill Because he shouldn't have been spoken about that way He's a referee He's always right And then we went And I said Bill I said why did you send me off of, Like I've called you <laughs> a cheat other other players like yeah. in that game you've been called that three times he goes no i didn't send you off because you called me a cheat he goes i sent you off because you told me stephen clark was a better referee so <laughs> oh, oh mate, that is so, so yeah cool. so that's so, so that's pretty cool and i put that in my book and then he's uh built and we we actually had a pretty good relationship i worked with him yeah. at triple m yeah. for like a few years after that and yeah. we did a few speaking gigs together and he's a he certainly one of the greatest referees, if not the greatest. And, you know, he was part of the game then. And Super League needed, because, like, then he come across and mm. if you look at all of his big games, especially if you won them, they did flow a bit. Like, mate, he let – he he sort of let them work it out themselves, mm. you know? I, I – look, mate, you know, way more about footy than me and even, mate, he probably does as well. But I do think that, like, the, the refs of yesteryear – Maybe the refs now get directives to not let the game sort itself out. But I do think that when I go back and watch some of those games, they were really good at letting... And look, I know that punching's not allowed anymore, but they're really good, good at letting like almost unwritten laws on the footy field yes. take care of themselves. Yeah, there was a... Well, there's a bit more common sense. Okay, well, there's a feel... And they'd call it the feeling out period. Mm. So for the first 10 minutes, it wasn't anything gay because if it was really bad, mate, you were sent off. Like yeah. there was... But it was a okay, no, nah. and you go, oh, Bill, and he goes, mate, you, hey, mate, your mate did it over there yeah. before, so there was that. So mm. he wanted you to get into the game, and then you go, okay, well, they're getting away with that, that, mm. and if one team kept on doing it and wasn't giving the other, that's when he'd crack down. But mm. it's sort of who's who in the zoo, and you worked it out. It was like the old school playground that mm. you worked out what was happening, mm. it, it, and and before the game, they would they would come up and say, hey, no, that's not happening today. That that that. So you'd go back in the dressing room and go, okay. hey, boys, this is what he's cracking down on today. Yeah, yeah. Boys, he's cracking down on that. And I'd say, hey, you said that. Yeah. So then you could hold them. A bit and But there was no mics. Mm. There was a great conversation. Mm. Like a couple of times the referees in my area go, mate, you, mate you, fuck. God, you're having a shocker today. <laughs> so, but it's funny, you know what I mean? Because yeah. blokes, mate, no, no, mate. Mate, you've made more mistakes than me. Like, you know what I mean? So yeah. there was that bit of banter. Yeah. And they couldn't have that these days yeah. with all the mics and then the mm. scrutiny underneath them. So it, it's a tough job. It yeah. is a really – someone's happy with them. Someone thinks they've done a poor job. Yeah. I wouldn't like it. But I think they do – all in all, they do a pretty good job. Mate, I say it all the time on the podcast. The sad thing for referees is the better you are, the less you're noticed – the worse you are, the more you're noticed. <laughs> yeah. So you never remember a good ref because it's not about the ref. Yeah, it's, it's supposed about to be seen, not heard. And whereas a bad ref, the more he's, the worse he is, the more you notice him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, you look. Yeah, I feel bad for refs a lot of the time because. Did I you think, used to talk to him like mate when no. you're on the wing? Would you go, come on, sir? No. Like, oh, touchy. Did you see that? 
Oh, I would, I would do, I would do the come ons a lot, but yeah. I, I wasn't big enough of a player to like go and speak to her or anything like that. No way. I would just do the like, oh, come on, but I would never like. No <laughs> way. I was, I was still a little fish. And when I came through with the Broncos, that old tr- school tradition that you guys had left was yeah. still in intact yeah. of like if you're a young fella you just shut your yeah. mouth and, and yeah. do what you're told until you've earned your stripes yeah um oh, the game's changed and, and for good and for worse it's not i'm not sitting here saying oh it's, yeah. you know all these young fellas now don't get it i, I just did you that, ever run in and <laughs> right into well yeah <laughs> did you <laughs> no there was one time though i remember i think it was mick crocker yeah. he so i was getting a bit of joy around the ruck just because yeah. i was smaller yeah, and quicker fun, or whatever yeah. Anyway, Mick Crocker just said, fuck this. Boom, swinging arm, cross the, you know, whatever. I, got, I remember getting up and, like, we squared up to each other. And in my head, like, I, all I thought was is I'd rather get knocked out than back down. Yes. So I just thought there's no, hopefully there's no way he can knock me out before the boys come. <laughs> Help. Yeah, before the boys all come. Because I'd rather, I'd rather hit yeah, him on up my myself. chin. <laughs> then go, oh, leave me alone kind of thing. And so that was the only real time where, it's not like I went to him to square up, but where no. I didn't take like a backward step or whatever. But it wasn't out of like, I'm so tough. It was more out of like an honour thing. Like I'd, yes. I'd rather Just get knocked out. Drew the lantern, yeah, yeah. And he would have respected that. Yeah. <laughs> Big Mickey Crocker, he got me good. He got me real good. Yeah, mate, but like then straight away he goes, I like that. Mm, yeah. You know? Yeah. And you know, and there's another thought process. He doesn't know that you can't go. <laughs> yeah, so if he gets he beaten by a winger, if he gets – mate, if you go and one of the wingers go bang, bang, bang and, and dishes you up, just imagine that. Just like, like, yeah. man, like, just imagine if you were a golden glove and you just knew and yeah. you went bang, bang, bang and then Crocs is falling. Could you imagine like, – because he's sitting going, you have no right to be not backing down. You should be backing down yeah. right now. And Why then you stood you up and he's not. <laughs> mate, I, I distinctly remember just thinking the boys will get here before I get knocked out. So I just got to take one or two, and at least that means I didn't back away. <laughs> yeah, and, that's and, good. And yeah. Luck, luckily, I didn't get didn't get one on my chin because I don't know if I would have been able to take it. Um, okay, so you know, two thousand uh, in year two thousand, obviously you win another grand final of the Broncos, and you just you're at, in my opinion, the peak here for you. You just you yeah, feel, it feel, really feels like you've ran out your game, and almost from going back and watching old footage, almost as if you really knew what impact you could have on a game and the way to do it. What was that year like for you? It was cool. It was pretty much all that what you said. I think you just settle in yourself. I was 27 and I've, because of all those lessons that I'd learned, you know, mm. about thinking and getting distracted and, you know, blowing your stack early, you just, energy just cool. This is the job I'm doing. This is what I can do. And, and I think knowing what you can do, mm. I think knowing what you can do it's actually really powerful. Like, mm. you know, like Jared Rhea Hargreaves knows that when he runs out on the field, he knows what he can do. Mm. So it's sort of cool to have all those traits. They yeah. do a hit up, but then you know that you can do this or that all like a halfback. They know what kick they got. Yeah. It's just pulling it out at the right time. And I think about 27, I think I got that. Mm. You know, so that was a, that was a really cool year. And that was a great year. That was a, that, that was that team because we'd lost so many stars like Elf and all the boys. So that was a, that was a, that was a year where the guard had changed because there was no Lazo, no you know, Pearl and Andrew G and all those guys. And then it was yep. myself, Webby, like I thought it was myself, Webby, Lockie and Wendell. We were the, sort of like the senior players. We yep. were the ones sort of making all the rep sides or, they, you know, call it, you know, like and we were getting selected. So, mm. um, and we just had to pull the young kids up. And then Kevy was there and Kevy was our, was our captain and he'd lost – like all of his teammates, so he sort of feel unlike yeah. the odd one out. But uh, he led us beautifully that year, Kevin. Yeah. Like he was, you know, it was outstanding. Actually, it was one of my favourite years. It was a really close. It's the closest, closest Broncos team I've ever played with. Yeah. Okay. So, because yeah. I don't know. I think because we had to be. I think that we we all played a lot of golf together. We were mm. always having a meal. You know, like then the boys would we'd go to Tomato Brothers and have a pizza on a Tuesday night. Then we'd. You know, then on our day off, we'd all go have a game of golf. And then mm. Thursday night, you know, after training, a couple might go have a few beers together. But we were just, you know, like the groups of boys were just always together. So you know what's r- funny is that, like, you didn't mention once coffee. And so I, I, 
<laughs> when when I was coming through, if you said to one of the boys, "Oh, let's let's go for a coffee," they'd be like, "Are you fucking serious, mate? What's wrong with you?" Whereas that nowadays, that's all they do is go for coffees together. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's it's hilarious. Well, they've got their own it's coffees. New, yeah, yeah, mate. Yeah. Like they got their own bloody. I just thought it was funny that you didn't mention that once because no. you know so old school back then. No, because we had the Nike tour. So like, then obviously like you'd make the Nike tour, mm. and you'd have the shoot really good numbers to get on the Nike tour or you're playing on these other tours. So you couldn't fly in the main groups, you yeah. know, so like the main group would have, you know, say eight or maybe 12 guys in it and then the rest and you had to win that group to get up and play for the money or whatever. So yep. no, 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 the boys, the boys still loved the beer. Mm. My, like my era, I know I got really disappointed when I retired and it's something small, right? Mm. But Wayne took the beer out of the, the sheds mm. and for me it's just simple if you want me to go out there and act like a man i can have a beer mm. i can drive out now i can go to a pub i'm over 18 and go and get a beer mm. put it there and mm. then none of the young kids sit with the old blokes so i would go down i'd sit with webby and i'd have a cold beer and we'd, and we'd just chat he goes and webby He's old, bloody tough. I said, yeah, you know, just as yeah. only Webby would tell you, and you talk. He goes, yeah, that bastard got me or whatever. And then we just chatting, and we he goes, oh, what about that and this? And then we'd sort of just cover the stuff that I needed to cover with the bigger mm. boys. So we'd just sit there, and it'd be two beers. Now the boys probably don't have a beer. Mm. Like they're actually better. Like they probably don't have a beer for six weeks. But then when they go out, it's you know, it's like a kid when they go to the <laughs> yeah. you know, like a party and there's all the lollies. Like they just have too many. Yeah. So that's the part that I think that we've got wrong in the game. Mm. Just let them have one. Let them all sit down as men. They don't have to have one, but still have it there. Yeah. 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 And then just watch, you know, like a Jared Rhea Hargreaves go go gets a go gives one to the young Suley and go. Well done today. Mm. Blah, 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 proud of you, blah, 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 or whatever. No, mate, I, I agree. Like, it's. I just think sometimes we get too caught up in the science of rugby league in regards to like, oh, this is good for you, this is not good for you. But you'd know better than, way better than me. <sighs> Every grand final you've won, it wasn't because we were faster, stronger, or whatever. It's always we just had this feeling. Yeah, it was just a feeling in yeah. the team. Well. All the scientists move around to all the clubs. So they got all that information mm. out. They can't get better. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Everyone's doing the same. Everybody thing. watches yeah. videos. They can't get better. What can get better is mm. the knit, how hard and and the belief and you not letting your teammate down. Mm. That's what can get better. Mm. You know, yeah. you tying in and doing whatever needs to be done. Mm. That's not science. Well, look at dolphins. You know, like that's not GPS. Like dolphins, they come into this year and no one their roster's not good enough and rah rah. But they got 17 blokes or 30 blokes with ticker yeah. that work for each other. And they're sitting in the eight. It's, uh, it's, it's Jesse Bromley said it in before. No, no, he doesn't. His standards aren't good enough. When he called out Milford, that I was... I love that. That was... That's the strongest statement I've seen a captain making on. So then that's Ages. it. Right, so he said that's... So right there and then I'm sitting at home going, oh, I'd play with him. You know what I mean? Because that's the, that's the standard. There's not enough of that in the game. Mm. Agreed. Agreed. Mm. Um, okay, so 2000, what do you remember from the grand final, mate? Because this is, you know, as, as I said, like a I remember, grand final. I remember leading into the week, it was the most nervous I've been because there was an expectation with us. Yeah. And for the first time, that was probably put on Alf and Kevy, and it was sort of around, well, I felt it. I felt the pressure, you know. There's no pressure, but I was feeling... You needed feeling, to impact the game. You were yeah, a player right? for us. So I knew that yeah. you were part of the reason why we were going to win or lose, right? Yeah, yeah. So we get to Sydney on the Wednesday before the grand final breakfast. Kevy goes, what's happening? I said, he goes, you want to be? I said, yeah. I said, I'd love one. Mm. And we were staying down in George Street. So we went to the Orient Hotel, mm. the, the big pub there. So can we get a beer, please? And it was like that. There wasn't any bloke in the bar back then. So we got a 4X, <laughs> we got a 2 E's, we got that. And we yep. just thought, we'll just drink the tap. You know, what was it? Six beers and go. Well, six probably turned into 10. Oh, my God. Right? We're playing on Sunday, but it's a Wednesday night. So we get back to the hotel. Good night's sleep. Wake up the next morning. Your grand final breakfast had to start. At, you know, like we're on air at 7. So we had to be up at 6 on our shirts and all that. Mm. Then we get up for breakfast on Sunday morning. Kevy goes, in the paper that were on the piss. Oh. I went, what? He goes, they didn't name anybody. Wayne's filthy. He goes, just don't say anything. I said, I won't. 
They go down one and go, fucking, fucking what about this? Oh, yeah, I said, I'm going to read the paper. <laughs> he goes, oh, fuck, I said all the players. I said, oh, fuck, I said, please. <laughs> right? You know, we were eating my wheat bix or whatever. <laughs> we go play enough to the Wayne. We did, but it was the nerves and, mm-hmm. it was, and it was the big boys. And when you say the big boys, it was myself, it was – you know, Webby, it was Wendell. And then Wendell wanted to wear – Nike brought out these great silver boots. Mm. That was the year the Olympics were here. Kathy Freeman mm. wore that suit. Oh, so The good. silver, like, moon boot coming. Yeah. And it looked so cool. Yeah. Wendell goes, I want to wear that. And straight away in my head, I'm thinking, Graham Langlands. Graham Langlands, dragons playing against the Roosters, wore white boots in a big game. Don't change it. Stick to the boots that you're wearing. Yeah. Wendell goes, I'm wearing them. I'm Nike, I'm Big Dell. I said, no, you're not wearing them. And then – because he's a team man back then, yeah. he didn't wear them. So at the bar, talking to Wendell, I don't want you to wear them. You're bigger than that. We're going to go play in a World Cup. Mm. Pull them out in World Cup. Yeah. And he did. Yeah. And he got yeah. man of the match, you know. No way. Yeah, but that's the team part. The that, small things, you know. The small things. Yeah. And that's what I think of beer and or just time. And maybe that is a coffee now. Mm. But mm. you're not going to go have a coffee at – Eight o'clock at night because you won't get to sleep. <laughs> yeah, so that's 100%. when you need a beer. Hundred percent. But the game was cool. It was at the Olympic Stadium for the first time. Mm. Um, wow! I remember Tony Carroll hitting Brad. Um, Brad Fittler. Brad went to step him, and tons has hit him, and he just got up a bit gingerly. Yeah. And Thorny hits Matt Singh. Mm. There was a couple of massive collisions, and Lockie, the Roosters got across the line early, and then um, with Chen and Hegarty and Lockie. Gets him over, so it, it was it was pretty cool. And Minicello was marking Minicello was marking uh, Lottie on the wing. Wow! And what Lottie matchup. and then Lottie had a bit of a field day, and Mini turned into one of the greatest fullbacks to play our game. So yeah. it, it was a couple of really cool moments in that game. Um, Tony Carroll, to this day, in my opinion, one of the best tackling techniques we've ever seen. Unbelievable! He was just. It was just a pleasure to watch him. A pleasure to watch. Just the way he hit in defence. And it was also like... Did he ever hit you? uh, Yeah, many times of training. It hurts, (laughs) doesn't it? It's so much. It Um, hurts, doesn't it? And it was... uh, What I loved about it, it was straight through the guts. It's so... And it's like... Yeah, there's no fold in him. It is so solid. So solid. Um, Okay, so you win the 2000 uh, Premiership. Incredible. But the next year, you captain a rookie Queensland side. 34-16 34-16 win over New South Wales in the opening match 2001. I mean, you're also named man of the match. Just, that's incredible, mate. It's incredible. That's cool. Walk, walk, walk us through that whole situation. We got beaten 56-16 the year before. Mm. I said to Wayne, I said, I can't play this anymore, man. It's embarrassing. I'm letting her, he goes, you're not letting the jersey down. Mm. He goes, we just need to make some changes. And then he brought in 10 debutants. So believe it or not, that's the most debutants. Queensland have had wow. more than fatties, nobody. Wow. So, um, but we didn't talk about that. We didn't want to talk about that. We just had to talk about what we needed to do. There was, you know, Buttergig, John Doyle. There was all these young guys. Carl Webb, that oh, great really? big Carl. Yeah, Carl Webb made his debut Mate, that night as well. Yeah, it was. It was. It was a great. And after getting beaten, I think it was fifty six sixteen, and the hand grenade. That's that was probably the lowest point of my rep career by far by mm. so far and what we were tossing up in that jersey and new south wales were really good at the time but that should never have happened and then mm. um it gave us a lot of motivation not not the game but for queensland and then all these young kids come they didn't have the scars mm. so the greatest thing that happened all those 10 kids walked in mm. like i told you when i first walked in for queensland no scars mm. come in with pure excitement they were so excited to wear and then i'm a bit nervous, but I'm excited because they're excited, yeah. and it was just the right mix. So we yeah. had, a, so we had enough old guys there that could bring these young kids along, and it was that's my favourite game for Queensland because um, it's the last of a game at Lang Park. Oh wow! And you got man of the match, and you captain yeah. the great stadium. So to you know, I mean, so that stadium needed that. Yeah. I think that stadium to close the old Lang Park mm. before Suncorp. Yeah, and it was you know I think that's. That's what made that game special for me because mm. the old arena. I've, I've got that photo somewhere in my house. I don't have it up, but it's somewhere. But that's a. But that's cool. And that's when Carl Webb scored that amazing try when he bounced bounced a heap of guys yep. off. He sharked me about three minutes before, <laughs> and I said, "Don't you fucking do that!" 
because I had a play and he's fucking called it. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. he backed himself, which I loved, right? Yeah. Now, deep down, I look at it, I go, fuck, man, you backed yourself. You got <laughs> I said, you ever fucking do that again? And I, and I ripped him. About two minutes later, he's gone boom, 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 scored in the corner. I run over and said, you can fucking chuck me whenever you want. <laughs> Mate, it, it, it was a great moment. Like, yeah. you know, and young Lottie and like it was, that was my, fa- yeah. It was, it was, and, and it's actually my favourite photo because I'm, walking out for the first time as Queensland and you just wanted to walk and the photo was just of that old Stanford. Yeah. It's one of my favourites. It's not even action. It's yeah. just Queensland. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. And you're captain now. You're captain now. Oh, yeah, but no, no. I just had mate. the C beside my name and walked out first. Mate, it's incredible, mate. Yeah, Absolutely. No, incredible. mate, that was cool, yeah. Um, and then the next year, <laughs> the siding match. Oh, man. The tackle. I know you would have spoken about no. it a million times, but please, please give us the. Uh, I. It just happened. Yeah, just out it of just way. happened. Well, you imagine me now tackling P- Pappenhaus, and I'd be sent off for a hair yeah. pull. Oh mate, you'd be it's gone. a hair pull. <laughs> yeah, you'd be gone. <laughs> you'd be no, gone. um, yeah, lot, like Lottie was just in field, and then I saw Hodson just try to skip around because there's no winger pushed up, and I just run across, and I had the angle on him. And I just got his collar, and that and that ground can get slippery, mm. especially on the edges. And when I've grabbed him, he sort of he sort of half slipped off his feet, mm. and he's not the biggest guy. So when I so like when I lifted him and I saw the sideline, which was about there, I'm like, oh, I can get him there. Yeah. I just thought I can get him there. Mm. So I thought one, and then when I slung him again, I just sort of let him, and he just slid and he stood straight up. Yeah. So I didn't think that moment was that moment. It was just like if you watch me, I just turn and I've got the angry head on i'm not i'm like <laughs> but i'm not angry i'm like let's get to the scrum let's yeah. just get them while they're down now let's just mm. keep the pressure on them so mine was about the next moment not that one but yeah it's pretty cool yeah it's, oh, it's better than the vision of getting sent off let <laughs> me tell you <laughs> it's, a, it's a yeah at origin time um i'd rather that vision than the one saying just go <laughs> so uh, it's um could you ever have imagined that it would turn into such a, a big moment, if you know what I mean? No. Like and I know. feel sorry for Brett Hodson because yeah, he was the men sure. of steel over in England. He, he, he's such a good footy player. He's a great, he, he was an unbelievable footy player. Yeah. The Tigers won grand finals. Mm. When he went to Parramatta, he was a better side. When Wes cl- folded, mm. Tommy Redonicus rang Wayne, one of his good mates, said, you need to take these kids. And he wanted us to take Johnny Scandalis, Harvey Howard and – Brett Hodson. Yeah. But we had a guy, a young kid by the name of Darren Lockyer at fullback. Yeah, he's all right. Yeah, he, he was going good. So, but Brett Hodson, that's mm. what Tommy and Tommy's no, Tommy was no fool and he mm. gave us Harvey Howard, was fantastic. And then obviously Johnny Scandalis wanted to stay and mm. they're great footy players. But I love his career and I, and I just, he shouldn't be remembered for that. He, he was a much better player mm. than that moment. Yeah, oh, he wanted, his debut was one of the best. Like he ran for like 250 metres or yeah, something on his a, debut. He's, he's so right. classy. Um, also, uh, the one finger salute a bit later uh, to a section of the crowd right behind the Northern try line when Dane Car- Carlos scored the uh, series winning try. Yeah, <laughs> why? Well, they had that sign up about my mum in that crowd that oh, time. Yeah. yeah, so there was a sign about my mum. Yeah. Then I run out because I'm a left side, so I run out and Lottie comes, taps me, goes, look at that, bro. And I'm like, look, and he goes, if I've got to sign up about your mum. Because that that part, and that's the time my mum and my wife was in the crowd. Yeah, wow. So they don't normally go to, yeah, because there's two games in Queensland or whatever, and, you know, they pick and choose. And as a mother sitting there and having your son get, like, let's be real, if – I wasn't New South Wales' favourite child, <laughs> no, right? So no, then, not at all. so for her to go there and hear what they yell, I can handle it. It doesn't. It's the water off a duck's back. But mm. if that's your son or if that's your blood, I know I probably wouldn't like it if I go watch my sons yeah. play sport and someone's yelling at them. Mm. It's I. But for that sign to be up there, I didn't really like it. And then when Dane Carlos scores and it's in the 80th minute, I'm on the left. He's just run 50 metres, pushed off Moody to score. I've run across as I was going to get him. I just basically pointed to where those where the sign was, and you guys can yeah. go and get. That was it. That was it. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. my moment back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the that blew up. That blew up wow. more than any that made that blew up. Wayne goes, "What'd you do?" I said, "They had to sign up about my mum." He goes, "Don't worry about it." Next week, all the journalists, and it's the first time I've got a love hate relationship with the journalists, but it's the first time I said to them as men, mm. 
can you please write? I said, I don't care if you hammer me. Mm. I write what you would write if it was if there was a sign about your mum. That's all I want you to do. Yeah. For, for once, it's the not about truth. me. Just write about the sign. Yeah. If it was about your mum, what would you? Oh, mate, but it's just you know. I said. And then they obviously they all hide behind their editor. I said, "Don't hide behind. Give me your editor's number." Yeah, yeah. So I was cool enough. So give me your editor's number, mm. and I'll fucking ring him mm. because just write the truth this once. Yeah, it's not about a big ugly Queenslander fucking telling that. It's yeah. about that shouldn't no mother should have to sit there mm. and have a sign written about. 100%. Him. Simple as that. That yeah. was it. Yeah. So that so and and then the. So those two boys, I never got to meet them, but their mother reached out and wanted me to meet them, and I didn't give them the time. Mm. I don't know what part of me is. Well, they didn't because I don't see kids that are good that you know want to meet NRL players. So why would I meet two dickheads? Mm. And and you know why do they deserve to do, like they yeah to come their time? well their mother wrote to me and yeah, said yeah. you know I want my sons to apologise to you, but yeah. I just sort of I just yeah. put that letter aside. Mate, you know? they will. So, anyways, yeah. So that's um, yeah. I wasn't short of a headline. <laughs> oh, mate, it was the best, the raging bull. <laughs> um, now you've uh, you've had a couple of a couple of sinks. What's what one stand? Obviously, you got the Ben Ross one, Terry O'Connor one. Which one stands out the most to you? Do you think, or even you could walk us through both? Well, Terry O'Connor called me a convict. Okay, that's all he did. Yeah, but we're really good mates. I just came back from England. Um. I caught the train. I was in Leeds. I caught the train down. We maybe had a couple of great nights out. Uh, his wife took my wife out. He, he's mm. he's such a great tough guy. Anybody that's played at Wigan with him, mm. all the Aussie guys, whether it's Matty Johns or Pearl or David Ferner, they love him. Mm. He's a really, really, really good fellow. And his son's a really good hooker that could come out here in the NRL as well. His okay. son's playing hooker for Leeds. He's a really good player. So, yeah, well. so that was Terry and me just – Two bulls, sort of. Yeah. He's standing his ground. He and Barry McDermott were pricks to play against. They're big, <laughs> they're tough. They wanted to get in your grill. Yeah. Then he kept on calling me a convict, and I said, okay, I'm not a convict. Yeah. So, mm. so as I said, I was sticking up for all the white blokes in my team. <laughs> yeah, the white fellas. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sticking up for all, Not you, Wendell. You were right. Uh, uh, oh, but, yeah, so. That's hilarious. Uh, yeah, so. And, <laughs> the then, white and, and, and then Benny Ross. It was calculated, mm. right? Because I broke my neck in 2001. Yep. So I had a disc taken out. So like a disc, I was laying there. And I certainly wasn't the same player because I couldn't do the same amount of weight because of the pain around my shoulders. And I didn't get all the feeling back in. So I, and I didn't do a lot of collision work. And you, you remember Thorny and some of those bash-up <sighs> days in Brisbane. Oh. Like we do a bash-up day on Tuesday. I'm going to Physio Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah. It's It was tougher than some games you'd mm. play, right? Mm. So I didn't get in any of that. So then you just drop little by little. You're yeah. dropping a percentage time by mm. time. And then um, people started to, start to get a bit more lippy and I wasn't playing the same, so I couldn't just grab that moment. Yeah, I'm laying on my back in Penrith. It's round one. It's about 38 degrees. But I told Wayne in October, I said, Wayne, all these young kids, they just keep on mouthing off. He said, what are you going to do? I said, I think I might have to smack one of them in the mouth. <laughs> And Wayne didn't laugh. He goes, yeah, cool. He just said, yeah. He goes, but just make him big and make him early in the year. Yeah, okay. He goes, what happened? I said, well, then I'll just shut up. Yeah. So it, whether it was Ben Ross or whoever, yeah. like if like in the early rounds, if someone was being smart, I was I was allowed to have a crack at him. Wow. And it just happened to be in round one and I'm laying there and Benny Ross and he, and he sort of hit me a couple of times and he and he sort of won the collision and mm. – and then I'm laying on my back and he's gone out and I've chopped his hand really hard. And I thought, oh, well, this is, so then I grabbed him. And he's going, go away. And then he had to write. I should let him go, but I held him for like 30 seconds. Yeah. He's going, I said, no, mate, we're going to fight. I just kept on telling him, we're fighting. He said, mate, no, 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 no. I said, we're fighting. We're fighting. So you better start throwing him so I'm going to let you go. And, he, and mate, look, and I'm holding him and I'm trying to like half you have him. And then as he's turned to push, the hand come, I just started going. Wow. So that was so that was that. So so one was just off the cuff getting called a convict. The yeah. other one was I was just old, fat and slow and should have retired. <laughs> have you spoken to Benny since? Yeah, he's I worked with him at South. He's, he's a, a champion. Yeah, he's a champion. So then so then how do you think I feel? I'm at South. Yeah. Then all the boys are into him. So you imagine the banter <laughs> yeah. there. But my Benny was a great fellow then uh, he had a couple of great years at South. Yeah. So yeah, so I've I've had a bit of time with him, yeah, he's a really good fellow, Ben. Yeah, mate, it wouldn't like. <laughs> I just, do you, were you always, I guess, 
taught throw first or, you know what I mean? Or was it more just Of something? course. Yeah, okay. If you say go on a race, who wins it? <laughs> the guy that starts first. Right. It's just a lot of kids. If you and someone are, are the same speed, yeah. whoever says go normally knows when it's yeah, go, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So don't stand there. Yeah. If you're going to let them go, let them go. Don't, mm. don't, I'm not a pusher. Mm. I'm not going to stand there and do that whole, like right now, mate, if any of those wingers come in pushing, he's just going to get a clip. Mate, you want to, it's crazy that you just said that. I don't know, do you at all remember, and you probably don't, you probably did a million times, speaking to an under 19 Queensland side uh, before, before, a, before a game? Do you at all remember? Yeah, I've, yeah. Well, I well I do done talk to sixteen, times? seventeen. Okay, yeah, so I've done about five of them. Just okay. just different. Okay, so you two, were playing, obviously. Yeah. So two thousand, like I don't know, <laughs> six or seven, or something like that. Yeah. You came and visited us at our hotel before yep. we were going out to play, and you basically, you know, you're talking about Queensland, how important it is, and the jersey, and blah, blah. and the last thing you said to all the boys was, if there's a stink, you either throw a punch or you walk away. None of this pushing and grabbing. Shit. Just fucking play the game or fight. Yeah, you either, you're either fighting or you play the game. Anyway, and so <laughs> what do you know? As soon as it kicked off, it became one of the biggest brawls in... <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> in origin history because all the boys knew your words of if it kicks off, we're fucking all so in. You either go in or you don't. Like, well, only because I was <laughs> just saying, don't do that whole bullshit yeah, yeah, push and shove. Just play footy. Yeah. And if you're going to get in a fight, get in a fight, but don't go looking for fight. Anyway, mate. I probably didn't articulate it because it's Queensland and there would have been a bit of anger. Mate, and, oh, you know I'm sorry. I'll get it up here oh, real quick for you to show you. you got to send it to me. I'm going to have to watch it. Mate, it is unbelievable. Who else was in that team? There'd be some lunatic oh, that started We're it. talking, oh, oh, it's literally like one of the first things that comes up. It is. Oh. <laughs> All right, yeah, here we go. <laughs> it's a full on it's a full on go oh god and, jesus and that's mate, big dave taylor big dave taylor will chambers israel falau uh aquila Uate, jared mullen hayne uh <laughs> and so what's funny is like me as a winger I didn't even know how to throw a punch at that stage. That is so good. But because you had said you either push, I mean, sorry, you either walk away or throw, I said the great raging bull has told me that I've got to throw, I've got to throw. <laughs> so we all ran in. Was that you in the background, someone throwing a couple at you late? <laughs> yeah, you mean Aquila Uate. Yeah. <laughs> that's gold, mate. That's got to go. That's, that's so good. But do you know what, just then? You played footy. Yep, yep. So that 30 seconds of madness yeah then everybody just got it out of their system and yeah. you played footy absolutely we did there absolutely. you go so part of the theory is if rugby league if they did it like i know you don't want it but if there was this you know two things you don't fight about is i talk about is whatever happens at whatever mm. they say you're allowed to hit mm. so mate, when a winger runs and just go go away hit him and then that's it mm. or or if they run any more then five meters, you go to the bin. Don't yeah. go run. Don't. That's what escalates it. Yeah. Mm. Like the the one on one will never happen. Mm. And if they do, those two go to the bin. Don't you run in? And if you run in, you go. Yeah. yeah it's. Uh, <laughs> that's the part I get frustrated with. Yeah. Just everybody running. It just. It looks like, like an AFL. They call it a melee. Yeah. And to me, it looks like ballet. Like, <laughs> give me a break. There's no melee in it. It's like ballet. It's just like Mate, I'll never handbags forget it. Yeah, that I, that was good. <laughs> I don't know who was number seventeen there, but he let him go. Probably will ch was a headgear. No, number seventeen, big tall guy. Looked like he had his head strapped Mate, up too. That um, was good. No, Willie Chambers. He was great. He yeah. was great in it. So yeah, it was actually yeah. You spoke to us before it and. So as you can see in the video, Queensland swarmed New South Wales because they weren't ready. They weren't in the same mind frame that we were in. We were, no. in the, we were ready to go. How cool. And as I said, I can't, I can't, at the time I had no idea how to throw a punch, but I was just like, mate, Cordy's told us to do it. we got to <laughs> oh, do <no>. it. <laughs> so there you go, mate. There you go. Um, oh, well, I enjoyed watching. <laughs> uh, so you retired from footy altogether 2004. Yeah. What, what was the catalyst for that decision? Well, I couldn't, I was about 30, I turned 30, I just, just with my neck, like when I heard it in round, uh, in 2001, round 13 or whatever it was, I just couldn't be the player that I wanted to be. Mm. 
You know, and that's that was the frustrate. Of course, I could have played a role. You know what I mean? Like, mm. you know, you just watch someone evolve, and you do that to that to that. Yeah. But that wasn't me. I I, I didn't want to do that. Mm. So, um, yeah, I did. Uh, I reckon it was about round ten. But I but I knew I just wasn't. I wasn't the player that I wanted to be. Not what other people wanted to see. What I wanted to be. So, time to ride off into the sunset and. Mm. Um, I love my career. I'd love to have – I would love to have gone and played in England. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? Because that's what they did back yeah. in the 80s. So the blokes that went before me, they'd go and they'd go finish in – you know, they'd yeah. go to England and after spending some time there, I just wish I could have. And, you know, you look what Mitchell Pearce is doing over there. He's yeah. living in the south of France getting paid really good money. <sighs> and you're on the doorstep of some of the best places in the world. Yeah. You know, Media's not killing you every week. You're not getting smashed in the papers. There's no father and son rule. You don't have yeah. to live up to anybody else. You just got to go out there and, yeah. you know, play the sport that you love. That'd be pretty cool. What do you, what's your f- number one favourite moment from your career? Grand finals. Yeah. Oh, w- one moment? One moment. If you had to pick one to... Show the kids or relive, what would it be? I scored a try against Melbourne Storm. Mm. My eldest son, Ethan, who's 19 now, was born. Yeah. And I gave him a kiss that I'm going to score you a try. Oh. And after the all the emotional week, he was born on Thursday. There was no sleep Friday, no sleep Saturday. You're playing Melbourne Storm, Billy Slater, Crocs and all those guys. Yeah. And I wasn't playing that good. And Wayne Bennett said, come off 60 minutes. He goes, come off, go have a shower mm. and go spend the night with your son. I said, no, Wayne, I promised him something, and I did. I scored. Yeah, wow. That was That's cool. That's special, man. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was just different because you've, you've, I've scored better tries, but I go through and Billy comes across, and I just remember hitting him with the left foot. I, I don't step. <laughs> Fuck, okay, I don't step. And I think I went through croc and that, and, I've, and, I, and I hit Billy with a left foot step, mm. and I scored. And it wasn't, it wasn't a big moment. It'd be no, it, it's, it's no moment. It'd be never on a highlight reel. Yeah. But for me, if I promise something, you've got to deliver mm. it. So, mm. so that was cool. That's a moment. For me, no one else fucking knew. Yeah, that's um, special. Team, best team moments. Um, best game probably was the 2001 State of Origin. You mm. know, the, the for them to say Origin was over and have all those young kids, the Doilies and mm. Butter Gigs and all that playing, Carl Webb playing their first Origin and that that was a that was a pretty cool moment. And grand finals and playing like. Like all of it's really cool. Like yeah. running out for the dragons, man. Like I like like I love running out at Cogra. Mm. Yeah, I mean, like every game I played, there was something that I loved, and I yeah. felt like the bit of the the Gordon Tallis going to the sports reserve as a sand boy or a ball boy. Mm. Part of me was tied into that kid out there. Well, yeah. it is him, but just remembering that moment and where I started. So, yeah. So all the moments were cool, and then now, like. I love being a fan. Like I'm a fan of the game. Yeah, like I go sit and I watch, like, and I'm an ambassador of the Titans. I love them. I want the Gold Coast to win. I want the Gold Coast to be successful. No team on the Gold Coast has ever won a national title, I yeah. don't think. So, you know, to go there and watch them and watch Tino and those guys, I actually sit there and, I, and I'm and i starting to get that, oh, go, you know, go yeah. where, you know, you sort of lose that unless it's a really big moment. But mm. I'm just a fan of the game and mm. I love what they – what most of the players are doing these days, not mm. all of them, but most of them are re- like, you know, like they do a pretty good job. Yeah. And what, what uh, I guess watching that eight in a row and knowing that I guess you were part of... The worst fucking like Queensland No, team. not the worst. What I was going to say is, is that th- they would have drawn a lot of inspiration on some of the stuff you guys did in the early 2000s. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oregon's strange. Like I played, I played against a New South Wales side where Andrew Johns and Immortal was number 14. Mm. So I played against a really, really strong... Not saying that that eight in a row, but sitting there watching, I didn't I I didn't feel part. I felt like the guy from Bundaberg. I felt like the guy from Mount Isa that comes home with the dust on him. That sits down and watches that team run out. That's, yeah, okay, really. I feel like that. I don't, I I don't feel like Quint, uh, Gordon Tallis the footy player. I feel like Gordon Tallis the kid that sat with his dad. Yeah, wow. To watch the game, I was a fan. I was a player. Now I'm a fan. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I don't. When that, like team, mate, when that team runs out, I'm like a fucking bloke from Cooktown sitting yeah. there, like sitting there. Yeah, wow. That's yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, I don't, yeah I, don't, I don't feel player. Because outside looking in, like, you are Queensland spirit. You know what I mean? And like, that's. Arthur's like, Queensland spirit. 
Yeah, I, I, yeah, for sure. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. there, there would have been players that would have looked at what you did in, in the Origin yeah. Arena and said, that's what we're fucking about. Well, the best thing about that is when I walk past those guys mm. and anybody, when Wally Lewis shakes your hand, mm. G'day Gordy, how are you? When mm. Mel Meninga shakes your hand, when Colin Scott, when, some, when like, when like you'd walk past those originals, when Arthur beats him, when I first come here, when I hadn't even played, he'd come up and say, G'day Geordie, how are you? Mm. Um, the, the brotherhood, but the community of rugby league and what it does for people is unbelievable. And, you know, to now to those guys or when I walk into a Queensland dressing room now, mm. you know, the way they treat me, it's, it's, it's really cool. The respect that what I've done in that jersey or, mm. or you know, and when you put on that jersey, you just got to add to it. You never own it. You mm. just rent it. Yeah. And when you rent it, you got to make sure that, it's, you know, that you keep it in good condition. I yeah. suppose. Mate. Oh well. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, you know, putting on a jersey, myself, I'm so grateful for what you did at the Broncos, and I had the ability to obviously wear that jersey. So thank you for everything you did at the Broncos, mate. Because it's a privilege of my life to be able to have played for that jersey. It really. It's is. cool, eh? Yeah. It's, it's of my see, life. Some, I remember that try you scored when Lockie did Lockie kick it for you. Yeah, time. yeah. That, that, yeah. I'm sitting there in row four or whatever. I used to sit right behind the players. So when I first retired, I'd get there <laughs> and I'd walk in with a hat on and sit yeah. there. And then now I'm working more on Fox and Triple M. I don't get the opportunity. The other day, Tigers played. I got the bus. Yeah. I caught the bus with the kids. We walked in there. I'm sitting there. Then. <laughs> Michael De Beers there and all yeah. the old guys. It was just it's it's the first game I've gone and watched. I didn't have to work. Yeah. And you sit there and watch that and and you're right, it's sometimes not the player, it's watching that jersey mm. just come back out, which is cool. It's yeah. a good moment. Mate, absolutely. Now I ask all the boys this. I'm not sure if you're a rap man, but favourite rapper of all time. Eminem. Eminem? Eminem or Goat. Snoop. Mate, he's gonna love that, Matty. He, it's his oh, favourite. It's Eminem my favourite too. It's my favourite too. <laughs> Uh, is it Eminem? Yeah, fucking. Oh, knows. he's fucking so he's cool. He's the goat. He's the goat. Well, see, that was big when, and um, Nally was really cool. Like, yeah, mate, I remember Nally seeing Nally, here, mate. Yeah. See, so I remember seeing Nally in England, uh, in America, and then he comes back to Australia. I play the game. I walk in because I was at B one hundred five, whatever. I walk yeah. in. I had to, I had to interview the stars when they come. So I go. I've got the little Vox Pop thing. Yeah. I go in, knock on the door. He's come out with these huge big dudes. He goes, G'day, and I got a black. Oh, what's that from? He goes, I played footy. He goes, what's that? He goes, I play rugby league. And it was on. I said, that's it. <laughs> so then he watched the Broncos game with me. Turn up. What's that tackle too? <laughs> and it's all and it's all like on yeah. you're like uh, on on tape and he had country grammar and all that. But yeah. I remember his, and then like then he was pretty cool. He goes, can can those girls come to my concert? <laughs> so I rang the club. Hey, all the girls can go to Nelly's concert. Yep. There's these people. Talk to your people. Yeah. And mate, all the boys. So he was he was actually really cool. No and way. I met Snoop at South too. So oh, really? Yeah, Snoop's cool. Yeah, they're all cool. Like, what about that Super Bowl when Fiddy, Dr oh, Drake, bro. and Snoop? Mate. Yeah. So good. So good. Uh, so are you rap? So oh, I'm R and B rap. R and B. Uh, what about now all those country singers have come back? Oh, they're killing how big it now. Are, how big they're are they? so big. Um, who's the... Re the, the, the Wallen, uh, someone. Wallen, yeah, whatever. He's selling out in like, boom, second. It's crazy. Yeah, I can't... Yeah, it was never that big when I was... Like, yeah, country is just same. massive. Country was almost like... If one of the boys listened to it, it'd be like, oh, you know, come on, yeah. bro. It was yeah. like Webby, Webby, turn off Slim. <laughs> turn off, Webby, mate. turn off Slim. Get Lee Kearney, get Troy Casadale, don't, mate, I don't mind him, but all the others, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that was it, mate, when Webby had the guitar. Oh, I don't listen to that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Favourite movie of all time? Oh, God. Shawshank Redemption? Mate, everyone says that. It's got to be the greatest movie of all time. It's one of. It's it's It's, it's one of. You know what? I need to rewatch that. I need to rewatch it. I haven't watched it in years. But everyone says Shawshank Redemption. Shawshank Redemption. You've never watched it? No, I've seen it. I've seen it. Forrest Gump's good too. Oh, yeah. Forrest Like Gump. Like, I think in 94, they all come out together. Like, mm. like if you look, there was like, in one year, like four of the classic movies, I think Pulp Fiction and all these all yeah. come out in one year. It's, it's Mate, ridiculous. They day that. Movies, they really, I don't think they make them like they used to. Seriously, it's too much bullshit. And Shawshank Redemption, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, I like that. Um, Mate, thank you so much for coming on. It's a pleasure, I mate. I really, mate. really appreciate it. Do you know what? And congratulations to you. You've done so well. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it's it. And for people cool. listening, Gordy is one of those blokes that literally 
one of the first blokes goes out, bought a case of bloke beer, sent me a picture, and it just meant so much to me that, you know, I didn't have to ask you or anything. You just Why wanted to you? go out and support, mate. So I, I fucking appreciate that so much. Cheers, man. Legend. Thank you so much, brother.